got the power of the soul. I have the power of the body. Together, we are the Double Dragon. It's bad movies rule. Let's go. Oh, guys, what a, sometimes I, I have to pinch myself because we're so lucky. I got the power of hypertension. Perfect. <laughs> then we're the triple dragons. Yes. Let's go. What does that give you the power of? You're just constantly tense no matter what's happening? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I pinch myself because we're, we're so lucky that we get to cover today maybe the greatest movie ever made. Maybe... It, certainly the best movie of 1994. I know that's the I think same so. year that Shawshank and Pulp Fiction came out. But no one but cares about those movies. No one cares. No, who cares? Yeah, who cares? Street about Fighter those? came out. Street, in Street Fighter. Yeah. Wait. I mean, so Street Fighter and Double Dragon, the two greatest video game movies L ever made. Street Fighter, same year. At least the second best video game movie made that year. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say top 100. Yes. <laughs> Guys, it's a it's a banner day today. We've got uh, the shoe salesman himself, Mel Vandy, is in the house. How are I, you today? I am phenomenal. Things going. We had a good fourth quarter at the shoe store. No. Oh, oh man. Dang it. There's a reason I'm here and not working today. <laughs> Perfect. Economy's tough, man. The economy's right. tough right now. It is yep. tough. Yes. <laughs> That's why we need a new mayor. You know, right. It's time for the mayor to be the actual yeah, mayor. Yeah, right. right. Come on, mayor. Turn this thing around. Today, we have the manimal Bob Hauser. What's going on? That's right, buddy. I'm just pumped because it's, I mean, it's great just that the three of you are here, but there's an even more special, -er, more special, yes, more there's special someone very special person here with us. that's at the kids' table today for the first time since Cobra. Cobra. We've got our sister, Rachel Hauser's in the house. What's up, Rach? Not much. What's going on, guys? I'm sorry that, well, I'm, I'm happy you're here. But sorry that you came here and were like, guess what you're getting roped into? <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick your weekends better. Are you, are you busy? I had no right. idea. If I knew it was Double Dragon, I wouldn't <laughs> Oh, gosh. She was so pissed, so I turned it on. <laughs> <laughs> Last week was Back to the Future week. And then, yeah. you know, I mean, come on. You missed Sad. it by one And week after Double sure. Dragon, Masters of the Universe with Dolph Lerner popped up, it said it started yeah. in T-minus 12 seconds. She's like, we're not watching this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Perfect. A, it's a good thing. We've See, the, the other... We've got the, the trio of Hausers here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You got one medallion. <laughs> the rest of the Ribunal is off outside <laughs> with the other medallion right now. We're going to put those two things together. We might swallow up Clint's shop if that happens with a, just a hole in our earth open up. Dude, you know what? I felt terrible. Somebody pointed out to me after the fact a couple episodes ago when we did Runaway, yeah. the Ribunal was here and we didn't even mention it. We didn't it even mention because it. Because it didn't dawn on me. Farrell and Madela were at the desk and, and you and Clint came in from yeah, the kids' table. Yeah, we came table. in the kids' table. And so the Ribunal was in the house. You guys had it me almost dying. shouldn't count. It shouldn't <laughs> You guys had me laughing so hard with the robot with the handgun thing. <laughs> Skid. I couldn't stop laughing. And the baby's so hanging stupid. from his stash. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, oh my God. Can we talk about that movie again? I, I wish. <laughs> yes, no, we could. We're here to talk about Double Dragon. I watched two great movies. I watched John Wick 3, where Mark DiCascos was in it as yeah. Zero. Best John Wick villain in the whole series. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's like, no, he was boring. Like, no, he wasn't. He was yeah. the best. He was like the first uh, formidable foe villain in that entire series, yeah. right? Because the first one he had a the only reason it was a close fight with the uh, with the first guy is because he was already all beat up and right, right. up and cut up. Yeah. And then who did he fight in the second one? I don't even remember. Uh, Common. Oh, that's right. That was, was a good fight. That was a good fight. Yeah. Yes. That, that, obviously, the bad. But Common's guy. not a martial artist. No. And Mark Tacascos is. Yes. yes. And he's great. Can we talk yeah. about John Wick instead? Yeah. No. <laughs> all right. Let's dive into the vitals here. <laughs> The movie was directed by James Yukich. Who? who? Yeah, exactly. He, if you look at his IMDb, respect to the guy. Tons and tons and tons of credits, but they're all for filming concert videos. You know, like Taylor Swift's going to release, you know, her concert on DVD or whatever. He would shoot those things mm -hmm. or music videos, and then in the middle of all that, Double Dragon, 1994. I have a feeling people would watch a Taylor Swift video more than Double Dragon if it came out right now. I'd Actually, watch, I would watch Double Dragon. Uh, before that. Yeah. I would watch I a, would mo too. Yeah. a movie of Mark DeCasco's roundhouse kicking Taylor Swift in the face. Dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. Yeah. Right? You're, are you a Swift? Do yeah, you're I Swift? don't know who she is, but I would definitely watch her. Over. <laughs> 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 oh, I mean, she's a her. very... How do you describe Taylor Swift, Mueller? Um, she's everywhere. Yeah, I mean, she, she, <laughs> looks a, she looks a little bit like a cat. I mean, if Just you turn into a Ch Kansas City Chiefs game, I mean, yeah. you see her more than the game. Right. So I that's mean, that's the best so place. I, you want to catch Taylor Swift. Yeah, I've noticed that. Game. 
Yeah, it's the best thing. Well, do. that explains that this movie looked like a music video. It, 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 right. It filmed on 8mm. Because yeah. they found in Dad's basement from 1973. <laughs> yeah. you, you mentioned 8mm. That mm. was much funnier than this one. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Nick Cage movie? 8mm? <laughs> hilarious funnier? comedy. Yeah, it's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, it was such a great... It was, just walked in there and That's right. it was great. <laughs> I am the double drag. I am the double drag. <laughs> You imagine if I harness the power of the double dragon, <laughs> I'll be one step closer to retrieving the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> you, Bob, you're gonna love this. I don't. I don't know if you saw this already, but if you didn't, get ready. What's up? The movie was written by Paul Dini, the same guy from the Batman. You know the what? I was. Series. I. That's awesome. <laughs> I was wondering why Paul Dini never made a Batman movie. Because he had Double Dragon on his resume. They lock the doors at the movie studios when they see him coming through the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, this hey, you can't come here, Batman sir. movie script yeah. all set. Oh, no, that's the guy that did Double Dragon. Security, get him out of here. I love Paul. Paul created the character of Harley Quinn, like just for the anime series. So turned into this huge character, yeah. comics, movies, all that stuff. Great writer. He worked on the Arkham games. Yes. But I, when I saw his name on this, I almost fell over. <laughs> Flapping or just? No, just like in shock. Right? Because, yeah. like, how could somebody so good have anything to do with, well, what am I talking about? This is a fantastic movie. Uh, also, <laughs> Neil Schusterman and Michael Davis were also co writers with Paul. Uh, Michael Davis, probably best known for writing and directing Shoot 'em Up, that Clive Owen movie Ooh, from 2006. Right. I don't yeah. know if you ever I, saw that. Yes, of course. Of course so. I saw that. Babes and Guns. And yeah. Guns Paul and Giamatti. Babes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In that order. <laughs> Movie starred Robert Patrick, Mark DeCasco, Scott Wolf, and Alyssa Milano, who uh, uh, later on a Peter Quill would name his spaceship after uh, Alyssa Milano. That's awesome. <laughs> what did I do this morning when we Alyssa Milano first bent over? <laughs> I had to Google to oh, see no. if she was old enough to look at. Oh yeah, <laughs> in that yeah, what, yeah. And I found out she was <laughs> You did not <laughs> pause the I movie. Stopped, I stopped. I paused the movie, and Rachel's like, "What are you pausing the movie for?" I go, "She's beautiful, but I gotta make sure this is okay to look at." Uh, that, yeah. oh. <laughs> and did you find out you were okay? I, uh, you, we were yeah, okay. You were okay. okay. We were All okay. Right. She's right. twenty-two oh. by then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're good. <laughs> it's the second time I had to do it's that. True. Wait, wait, wait. How old was Scott Wolf? He was oh. yeah. <laughs> just Marty McFly. He was <laughs> just, just making sure. <laughs> the uh, the budget for this movie was seven point eight million dollars, and the box office was four million dollars. Ooh, wah, wah. But with an made, yes, with an, an extra one point three million. Oh, um, Blu-ray in 2020. <laughs> Did it really? Yes. <laughs> oh, they're still, they're almost there, guys. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Double drag. Keep on trucking another 20 years and they're going to break <laughs> even. I, did. I, I think did they already broke it. even with my video rentals at Video Empire. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we'll finally get Double Dragon 2, the oh, doublest yeah. of dragons. Maybe if they get it off Tubi and put it on something else oh, that you pay yeah. for, you know. Oh, they could yeah. make their money back. They could make their money back. Maybe they're getting a slice of that sweet ad revenue. For you know, it, we'll see. Maybe they could have spent less on explosions. And I mean, the the teens in this movie were like thirty five anyway, so yes. they could have maybe thrown some money Jackie Chan's way. And oh, I don't know. Just I think they're gonna get Jackie Chan here. in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be good. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, right now on IMDb, this sucker's sitting at a three point nine. Which only thirteen movies that we've covered are lower than that. We are in rare territory. So we're in pretty. We're getting pretty that's, into the depths of the. That's Santa with muscles territory. That's that's pretty close. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right now, the only other movie that's at a three point nine that we've covered, it's tied with American Ninja Four. Oh. Uh, and I'll tell you what, American Ninja Four all day over Double Dragon. I mean, I don't know what you got. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen. <laughs> But any of the American ninjas. I, saw. I think it would be a fair fight, though. You think so? Two on one? You get Dudikoff and, um, oh, because Steve James wasn't in for No, Steve uh, James Steve wasn't James there. It was uh, the other guy. Yeah, and the other guy doesn't count. And so we get those two guys versus Jimmy and Billy. I'm taking Dudikoff and 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 Steve James replacement guy. But they I, got I can't that remember little, his like, name. necklace thingy. That would, like. He didn't know how to turn it on, though. Well, I mean, he didn't. So what? It worked. Well, we'll see. We'll, get, we'll get into all that. Right now, it's got a critic score of 12% on Rotten Tomatoes. I can't believe it's not zero. Because uh, <laughs> right. well, I get audience is a little less discerning. So they have a 26%, a little higher than critics. But, you know, to find movie critics out there that thought this was something is kind of impressive to me. 
Yeah, one out of every like eight. Go ahead. You're gonna say I, no. I'm just. I'm just. I'm looking for clarification here. Do we qualify as movie critics? Because I hate movie critics. I think they're all garbage. Not yet. We're better than movie critics. I mean, someday, maybe, but okay. not yet. Did anybody ever? Did anybody uh, got the fact that every they had to dock to get powerful? <laughs> <laughs> they turn into the double dragon. Many people yeah. dock to uh, become powerful. That's true. That's something that had to happen. What do you think would happen if it was a Dutch rudder involved? All right, let's, so <laughs> thank you guys for listening to the show. Uh, we appreciate that you guys are here. If it's your first time listening, we're going to go through this movie scene by scene. We're going to march through the whole thing, and at the end, we're going to give out some awards and figure out who deserved to get praised, who deserves to get put in the trash can, and ultimately, we're going to give our final rating, whether or not we think this is a good, bad, or a bad movie that rules you can also check us out on patreon if you want bonus content we've got four other podcasts that we do exclusively on patreon it's patreon.com slash bad movies rule and so we're going to take a quick break here it's time to pay the bills um were you guys not here some of you guys weren't here last week so the way that our new with the new network goes we literally just throw to a commercial break mm -hmm. leave a gap and then pick up and they shoot them in there themselves. Stop, so you guys have commercial breaks. Bro? We're about to. so not, we've sold out. Quite yet. That's awesome. Yeah, so we've sold out for sure. Woohoo! <laughs> Only for one year. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right, you guys. All right, you guys ready to dive into this movie? Yes. Yes. Yep. All right. It starts off like all crab great movies start with the voiceover somewhere in China. Blah blah blah. <laughs> This important thing happened. Shadow warriors were running amok, and stuff happened, and a king sacrificed himself to create a medallion, which he then ended up afterwards giving, after the warriors were vanquished, gave it to his sons. I'm... Um, I'm like, okay. There's definitely fine. He, the the king definitely had sex with two different women. What are you saying? That they're not blood brothers? They don't look identical. I thought they were <laughs> twins. No. Jimmy and Billy? Yes. I you get it's Jimmy clear. uh which one's Jimmy? Jimmy, Jimmy is, is Scott is, Wolf, right? Is no, that's Billy. That's oh, Billy. Okay, so Jimmy yeah. Mark the Cascos. Yeah. Yes. Okay, my apologies. Scott Wolf looks like he belongs to a family in Michigan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he does. What are you saying, Bob, that Jimmy couldn't live with a family in Michigan? No. Uh, Jimmy <laughs> Jimmy belongs with Moana. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I just don't know how the guy sacrificed himself and then afterwards gave the medallion to his sons. I thought I, he sacrificed himself. I don't know either. So immediately, I'm confused right yeah. off the right off the jump with this movie. But regardless, this is the backstory. We cut to a village somewhere in China that's burning. I oh, always yeah. think of the four yeah. huts on the <laughs> beach, <Right. laughs> literally somewhere in China, because that was the text at the bottom of the screen. Just somewhere in China. Okay, where? Like it's somewhere in China. I'm I not always, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Look at them. What a bunch of losers. <laughs> uh, Does it look like I would burn that village? I wouldn't harm that village. I immediately thought of Men in Tights. Every time we make a Double Dragon movie, they burn our village down. <laughs> it's very true. They're, they're looking to the sky to see if Chuck Norris is out there in the helicopter. No. Just start Mowing protesting. As our buddy from our, from our uh, Discord, this is Mr. Jonathan Golab, all, I knew stuff was about to go down when Al craps about to go down, Leon gets on onto the beach. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That oh, dude, yeah. the stunt man that's in like Big Trouble Little China, Die Hard, every movie from the 80s. Everything. Yeah. With the freaking uh, yep. Wu Manchu mustache. Yep. And Sweet the, mustache. And the skullet. Him and his yep. buddy were called Huey Lewis. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> just, just like I had to say, like, rewind and go, Huey wait a minute. And Lewis. Yeah. Huey and Lewis, yep. And the, the other guy, I can't, and I feel bad for not remembering the other guy's name, but the other stunt man that was with him was also part of John Carpenter's stunt team and in Big Trouble, Little China yes. and stuff, too. So as soon as I saw those guys, I was like, was all Jeff, right. Jeff Amata and Jeff yeah. Amata, Jeff that's Amata. it. Thank you. And Al Leong. And you see this lady, uh, Full head to toe in ninja gear, and her name is Lash because she's got a whip. Oh, damn, so damn, damn she does. Lady Lash, there's some girl from freaking General Hospital. Yeah, yeah, she can General Hospital in my ass. Into okay, a whip. <laughs> uh, casting like you think they're like, all right, we need this super ninja whip lady. Well, this I don't is... know. Let's scout General Hospital and see if they've got somebody. Well, Pam that'd be Anderson believable. was unavailable. She was making barbed wire. All right. Well, if you can't get Pam Anderson or anybody else from Baywatch, 
we could have at least gone to like Party of Five or Nev Melville's Campbell? place. Yeah, we could have gotten Nev Campbell. Somebody, yeah. Or we someone that Scott just Wolf. looks like they've ever used a whip before. Because from the first time she whips, you know what she looks like? She looks like a mom that was like, oh, let me try that video game you're playing and moves the controller when she jumps. <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yes, yeah. yes. That's what she, she's like, with the whip. You're not supposed to do that? No. Oh, no, it's no generally, it's like a flick of the wrist, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a, uh, yeah, the whole body. Her husband is unavailable to try it on him. She didn't get enough practice. <laughs> she should have got more practice. Um, they find half the medallion in this cave full of candles. I mean, it's a pretty quick scene. The, you know, there's some monks running around screaming. There's a <laughs> the cave full of candles. There's one monk up at the top like, take the medallion. Just don't blow these candles out. It took me forever. <laughs> it, looks like the, it looked like the set of the 95 Mortal Kombat movie. <laughs> the room full of candles. Yes, it did. <laughs> or an Aerosmith video. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to close my eyes. <laughs> I don't want to fall asleep because I miss, miss you, baby. baby. And I don't want to miss like you, baby. Because <laughs> even when I dream of you, you the sweetest <laughs> dream I never do. Oh, my gosh. That hurt. You know what those monks missed, though? <laughs> what they miss? Ice cream. What? <laughs> What? <laughs> they had all their tongues carved yeah, out, so they the never had cut. the joy of ice cream. That's true. So they couldn't tell them where the medallion was, but the one dumb monk went in there because he was so concerned about his candles getting blown out. <laughs> just <laughs> led him right to the medallion. He's like, it's right it's there. Right just here. don't blow yeah. these out. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, when you're, on, when you're in candle room duty, it takes you all freaking day to do that. You don't want it to blow out. Um, all right. So they're like, all right, well, that first medallion was super hard to find. How will we find the other one? Oh, it's on some chick's neck in LA. Not just any chick. No. Rambo 2 chick. I know. <laughs> it was the girl. It was uh, Ko, I think yes, was her name. you're not expendable. Oh, that's her? Yeah. Rambo. Yeah. What expendable mean? Yeah. That's all I think about whenever yeah. I saw her. And so it's the only movie I ever saw her in. Yeah. So when she shows up in this movie, she's like, hey, guys, how's it going? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? That's like Pat Morita, right? Who totally, you know, if you watched Happy Days, you knew he talked totally normally. Right. But as a kid, the first thing I ever saw him in was Karate Kid. So I thought the Mr. Miyagi speaks in broken English. And then I catch an episode of Happy Days and I'm my mind is blown. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh. He's he speaks English. Yeah. Very well. (laughs) Actually sounds speaks it better than I do. (laughs) Better than me. (laughs) All right. Let's get back let's get out to New Angeles because this is two thousand and seven. And for some reason, this movie has a post-apocalyptic setting. Why? It, it, there was no reason. None. I mean, otherwise, why would people no be reason. dressed like that? Well, I'm just saying, like, the, the story itself could have easily been told in a regular setting in modern-day L.A. or modern-day whatever. Right. To spend all this money to make it a post-apocalyptic setting when the really didn't serve the story in any way whatsoever. Mm. It's just, they're just... It seemed to be a total waste of money and resources you could have spent on better casting or uh, just, I mean, I don't know. Oh, I, I just think yeah, like there's no the whole, reason this story needs to be posted. They had the whole backstory of it too, like, oh, the earth, great earthquake of whenever it was. And right. Half of Los Angeles got flooded and whatever else. So. And everything else is like propped up. Like, yeah. With, like, yeah. And then you got the little, arms and everything. The little yeah. dwarf guy in the fight. Yeah. You know, arena jacking the roof up. You know, yeah. <laughs> I think that was all just a clever joke to to have the jack shack. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that that is true because we did have Channel sixty nine news. Right, and we're we're not talking about like porta potties in Iraq or Afghanistan. We're talking about the actual place where you can buy jacks. Yeah. for your buildings that are falling over. <laughs> right. right. There's a cut away to a news station so well well hold on because we got to we're skipping ahead a little bit here first we meet koga shuko okay played by uh robert patrick and he is in his monologuing room at bad guy headquarters and he dude has frosted tips yep oh his okay. whole top of his, his head, top frosted. head yeah. it's just like it's blonde dude looks he put this like black long flowing robe on yep. with like the white shirt underneath i was like this dude looks like vanilla ice cosplaying as ruth bader ginsburg <laughs> <laughs> do you know what i'm saying like he just looks that's like a supreme court justice like, is that, is that the, the t1000 or is that <laughs> vanilla ice over there i can't I, tell didn't tell <laughs> and he's being delivered the medallion they're bringing it to him right and he's pissed that they only found half of it here's yeah. lash and al leong and jeff amata and they've only got half he's like find the other half now and he turns into like this shadow being mm-hmm. for a second you're like oh all right dude's got superpowers he's serious he's serious yep. about this but it comes from the half of the medallion oh. that he has i had no idea it was him 
like no? at all. I had to I had to look it up on IMDb, and once I saw him, because I've been watching Reacher uh, season oh, yeah. two. Yeah, yeah. I completely didn't even think it was him. Oh no, dude, that's him too. Yeah, yeah. No, I. He's getting old. It, he's, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then we cut from there after you know we get the idea. Okay, here's the guy that's after the medallion. He's got to set the bad guy up. Then we cut to this tag team karate tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. What better way to I've have a seen. tag team karate tournament right. in an abandoned warehouse? <laughs> what was that? I said, I've never seen a tag team. No, not me neither. No. I never know that was a thing. Horrible either. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. They're literally like a wrestling match, tagging each yeah. other in. Oh, it's awesome. And they're catching points, you know. So it's like a mixture of WWE and a karate tournament that you'd see like in Karate Kid. And one of these brothers, Mark Casco's, can obviously fight really well. Yes. The other, they cast this guy from Party of Five. <laughs> said, here, watch these Who, Bruce Lee videos. Who's never and thrown a punch in his life. Like I said, he belongs in Michigan. And is totally useless. Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> like the upper half? Eh, okay, maybe Plymouth. The UP? Maybe just outside Detroit. <laughs> oh, okay. Plymouth. It's like in the mitten. Three mile? <laughs> three mile. <laughs> Ultimately, Too after wild. a couple of go back and forths in the fight, they get disqualified because Baby Billy pulls like an illegal noogie maneuver or whatever. Like gets oh, he on, gets on his back and he starts yeah. giving him a noogie. Like oh. disqualification. I'm like, how oh, is this a disqualification? Noogies aren't allowed in yeah. a karate like, tournament. Really? This is a disqualification. I mean, look is... at what we're fighting at. <laughs> then, <and> this is <laughs> a this is a tag team karate match. Right. Th th this is maybe a step above of a WWE tag team match. Maybe. I right. thought they were playing chicken. That's what. We, well, yeah. <laughs> they could have been. It cuts over, does the Miyagi shot where it cuts over to the coach, like supposed to be nodding proudly, and she just rolls <laughs> her eyes like these idiots. <laughs> Specifically, one idiot. They hand over the trophy to the other guys, and they're like, yeah, better luck next time. I'm like, okay, here's how you endear your good guys to the audience. Have them jump and beat the crap out of the guys that won Absolutely. the yeah. karate tournament. Oh, yeah. You don't call them a loser. The whole time, this little person is just jacking <laughs> this jack that's keeping the building He's from falling down. Roof. He's <laughs> 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 Because the building's trying to collapse. And so this is where it cuts to a TV commercial for Jack City. Jack City. Oh, Jack City. I thought it was Jack Shack. No, it was Jack City. Ah. It was like, it was like the guys that played Mario and Luigi on the old mario show saturday morning like at least the dude looked like that yeah and they're just talking about like selling jacks i'm like why is this here in this movie it never it never goes back to it yeah. ever again you're uh maybe a little you know just the whole earthquake thing and buildings unstable and right but we needed to watch a commercial for jack for jack city from these two guys just to to sell what i'm just gonna say they're a uh, Apocalyptic LA look way better than Escape from LA. It did. <laughs> that it did. <laughs> the backdrop actually didn't look too bad. Uh, then, we, then we find out that in in uh, post-apocalyptic New Angeles, George Hamilton and Vanna White and Andy Dick are the news people. Yeah. But not <laughs> playing not? news people, the actual people. It's yeah, Vanna well, yeah. White and George right. Hamilton yeah. and Andy Dick. I mean, times are hard. And George Hamilton's the guy that looks like he just got waxed and tanned all yes. day long. On, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. The world... Guys, this is what again with the the issue with the tone of the post post apocalyptic world, is that the world in many ways seems completely normal. Like we still have news and weather, and like later on, Alyssa Milano is in a perfectly normal house that seems like there's absolutely nothing wrong anywhere. Yep. But then the next shot, you're in like Mad Max in the Thunderdome. Yeah. You know what I mean, with like, the pipe uh, the pipe fitted cars and right. right. Yeah. So it's like it just doesn't make any sense to me. Mm. That's this why whole I stay setting. out of the city. <laughs> That's why you don't go to Chicago at night. <laughs> and pipe cars. Pipe cars. We also figure out there's a you know the news talking about this curfew thing, and so we understand we we find out the dynamic of the city at this point is there's this thing between day and night. Then in the daytime, there's a truce where the cops run the city. People can go about their days normally, but at nighttime after curfew, then the gangs come out and it's like the purge every night. Like, don't be stuck. But these guys don't do anything. These gangs are no. worthless. No, yeah, they do you, nothing. You, they do absolutely nothing. You've what got a like, freaking mime gang. You got the, po I guess the postal worker gang. <laughs> Postal worker. Well, there's all these themed gangs. The first one we see is like we're cowboys, but we're also bikers. Yeah, is yeah. like the first gang. Then there's the clowns, right? Mm -hmm. They look like mimes. They just look like mimes. They freak me out a little bit. And then they got the skateboarders. It made me, it made me think of the warriors. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where they had all the different themed, like the baseball gangs. But those guys look menacing. But that was cool. Yeah. This is not that at all. Mm-hmm. 
I was more afraid of the NPR guys from uh, Anchorman. <laughs> the most of these gangs. <laughs> Just Will Smith shows up. <laughs> I need a minute, guys. I'm sorry. That's yeah, all right. You're good. All right, we are rolling. All right, so guys, we just time traveled there. I don't even realize because it just sounded like no time passed at all. But we're actually now on the next day. We had to stop recording the episode, mm -hmm. um, Double Dragon. So now, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see that Rachel and Mel have disappeared. <laughs> we we love time traveling here yeah. anyway. So, yeah. and uh, yeah. here here we are. It's now just Bob and Mueller and me. So what happened exactly? Well, we got up to that part you just heard. We were talking about the themed gangs, mm -hmm. and then I had to take a break for a second because I was starting. To not feel well. You were turning three shades of yellow. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, went downstairs. That wasn't helping. Uh, I went and uh, tried to, you know, when you're not feeling well, you head, well, head to the it toilet, kind of walk, walk it, it off. off then, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. nothing was working, and all of a sudden, felt like I was getting stabbed in my side. I mean, it was like a ten out of ten level of pain. Ouch! Uh, I mean, <laughs> you guys were there with me. Yeah, I was. I was. Yeah, not, not that good. was. It quickly moved from. Guys, there's something weird going on too. We should go to the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so I ended up in the ER not, you know, 15 minutes after we were done talking about these themed gangs mm -hmm. from Double Dragon because I turns out I had a kidney stone and I wasn't feeling great through the whole first part of the episode, but I was like whatever, I'm just nauseous. I'll I'll tough yeah, it out. Yeah, power whatever. through it. Yeah. And uh it got to the point where that was just not going to happen. No. <laughs> so cut to the whole BMR crew in the ER. Double Dragon gave you a kidney stone. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, if, if, if that's the only thing it gives you, then yeah. you're doing all right, probably. And so, sadly, Rachel had to fly out this morning or drive home. She drove, she drove home. home. Yeah. She just back to home. Alabama, so you know she's not here with us. And Mel work schedule at the shoe store couldn't uh, make it work, so we had to get this done. It's, it's literally the next day, and we're going to just continue and pick up from where we left off. Absolutely, uh, I've I've got my pain medication, so I'm doing good. You're smiling. That's <laughs> yeah. good. Smiling. He's smiling. And, uh, we're Definitely. just going to roll on, but we'll never forget. Double Dragon. The movie, tell, the movie's so crappy it put me in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Can I tell the story about what you said oh, about the morphine? I, I, do, I don't care. Dude, I was in the waiting room for a while. You yeah, were, you were in the waiting room for you were a while. Shouting. Like, I not shouting because like, you're because you were in pain. No, I wasn't yelling at anybody. Yeah, and no, I might have been a little rude pain. to the lady at the desk. It was like, get me back there now. <laughs> you have to. Because there was no one else. I mean, there was two people, but then... They, they were in triage, were in and triage. then they came back, and you still were waiting for a while after they and came I back. I still was waiting and I was I, I was making noises just because it hurt so bad, but yeah, I wasn't right. yelling at people. No, just, you weren't no. yelling at people. I was just like, ah. Yeah, you're like, ah. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> 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 like Schwarzenegger pulling out the ball in Total Recall. Yeah. That was how yeah. James was feeling. You left my left the outline right here where it was, <laughs> left everything. Yeah. Mueller drove me over there. You guys met us there. <laughs> It was crazy. Rachel told me that you were asking for uh, for for morphine for a grown man and not a twelve year old girl. <laughs> I, I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't remember a lot. They finally it took it took a while. I remember they got me into the back and then they finally hooked me up to an IV. Yeah. I think they gave me three different things. Morphine was one of them, and then there were two other things. And then I felt pretty great a few yeah. minutes later. But it was taking a while to kick in, and so I, yeah. I might have made a comment like, yeah. "Did they give me the right amount of?" <laughs> I just imagine you were probably channeling your inner Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I want That's morphine right. for the grown That's man, right. not a 12-year-old girl. Not for a toothpick. Not for a toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the syringe. I'll do it myself. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So yeah, um, well, I'm, glad you're, I'm glad you're better. Yeah, I, you, yeah. you look 100 percent better. Thank you, because I was not feeling great, and I'm just happy. I don't know if it's. I don't think it's passed yet. Um, oh, I think you'll know. Yeah, that's yeah, what I hear. You'll know. I don't. But you know, it's. I'm. I'm. I'm medicated, so I can't feel anything right now. So yeah. we're good. You ready to keep going? Uh, I, yeah, yeah. yeah, let's do it. Let's okay. do it. We got to finish this thing. <laughs> so anyway, there's no way I'm not finishing Double Dragon. I got to get through this Either thing. way. I mean, we are contractually we got obligated to I brought to my this. bottle of pills in case I, I give another, you know, <laughs> we gotta knife do going into my side. Yeah. I'm not leaving the studio until we have finished Double Dragon. <laughs> Put you in a headlock. Finish it! Finish it. Seriously. We got to do this for Mark Diasco. That's right. Right. <laughs> he wants us to. Yeah. So we left off. They had just fit, they had just left their karate tag team team tournament yes. and they're now driving in their rocket powered station wagon i think it's garbage powered actually <laughs> which both my kids said what they do just strap pipes to the ecto-1 <laughs> yeah it's right, so it's a mr fusion basically it, it where yeah. like it's, doc brown was putting garbage yep. into the yeah. 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 yeah 
and uh, they're driving around and Sat- Satori, the girl from Rambo 2, we talked about her name mm-hmm. is Satori, and the boys are driving and she's like, oh no, we're going to be gang bait. You know, we're out too late. And like, she's so nervous. She's back there freaking crocheting mittens <laughs> in the back seat <laughs> right. while this is all going on. Like right. kind of cash for being worried about yeah. like, being like, out no. after the purge, you know, goes off. It's not really the purge. But that's what they try to sell it like it is. Like, oh, can't be out after can't be, curfew. Yeah, can't be out after dark. Because these gangs will eat you alive. And did you see curfew's like 7 p.m.? <laughs> yeah. Did you see the clock when they yeah. showed? Remember curfew? That's right. Big 7 turn your clock back. Right. I Good keep on forgetting if it's turn it forward or turn it back. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Vanna. <laughs> Comedy. <laughs> God. <laughs> They're they're banging each oh, other. That's, that's <laughs> for sure. And then you notice that's why Pat, Pat Sajak always does all the talking on Wheel yeah, of Fortune. Right, exactly. <laughs> they, you're right though. The gangs don't actually do crap because no. here they're you know they're driving along and 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 Baby Billy, the genius that he is, goes oh chick at two o'clock and she's my type because you see some girl like bent over into the oh, hood yeah. of a yeah, car like extremely yeah. bent like, over your right. type like she has legs is that, that yeah. that's what his that's it's all just, he knows about her yeah at this point <laughs> oh she's my type legs all and over a, she's not a, missing a leg legs in a man's ass <laughs> <laughs> That's his type. <laughs> Pull over, and sure enough, dude, wig just stands up, and wig comes off, and it's a dude. And yeah. Even even Billy or even Jimmy's like, "Yep, she's your type, all right." <laughs> that might have been the one time I laughed in this movie. <laughs> and it's the post-apocalypse. Like, of course, it's such a it's such a trope for these movies. They yeah. always gangs always use some kind of bait, right, to draw people in. Right. right? I even thought of of. Uh, um, Tom Hardy in Fury Road. He's like, "That's bait." When he points up at the, oh yes, you know the lady yeah. up there. Yes, yeah. that's bait. Yes, that's bait. I that's totally forgot about what that. I thought about when I saw this. Well, the Mohawks show up. This is the gang, and they're so terrifying that the you know, quick they 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 pull them up on freaking Gang Google or whatever this thing is. <laughs> it they literally got. was like Gang Google, <laughs> like the Gang database. It's Bobo. He can deadlift eight hundred pounds, which is the. Played by the head. which is played by the guy that has the ponytail, shaved head, but ponytail just that's all he has is the ponytail yeah. on the back of his head. Yeah, he's the same freaking uh, henchman from the mask. Is that the guy? It is. Yes. Yeah, I couldn't remember where I yep. recognized him from. And that's what they have on his IMDb too. They have his front <laughs> shot and they have his ponytail, oh, like, and the rest of his head's all shaved. I don't understand why there's a gang internet database that anyone can pull up at any point just to see how much somebody benches. Like, who puts that information? In there, I have no idea. Oh. Like, is a Bobo back at gang headquarters benching? He's like, Oh, I hit 800. Make sure you put that, yeah. upload he's, that. He's to at Wikipedia. his local Planet Fitness, just say, Enter it in, <laughs> enter like, it in, man. Yeah. And, and they know all they're gonna do is charge us 50 bucks to go, like, Oh, that's so terrifying. Can you swipe left or right on that uh, Google gang map? <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm uh, swiping left, gang, on, right. on, on gang <laughs> Tinder, gang <laughs> Tinder, <laughs> gang Ender, gang Ender. <laughs> Sounds terrible. Gender? I think Mohawks would be, <laughs> it'd be. Gr- it'd be <laughs> Grinder is what we're talking about here. Uh, but I Bo, think that's something else, James. <laughs> Grinder is something else. <laughs> Bo, Bo Abobo, this is the guy's name, and his tweaker buddy Hawk. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, walk up to the car, and you know they're doing the shakedown. Give me fifty bucks. So terrifying. I thought they don't. We take credit card. In most post-apocalyptic <laughs> movies, if a gang rolls up on you, you're gonna die. Not give me fifty dollars. Yeah, right, right. And we take credit cards. Well, this like, is MTV version of gangs. Right. <laughs> And so he sees the medallion around Satori's neck, and Bo Abobo goes for it, and then ends up getting stabbed in the hand mm, with right? a knitting needle. With a knitting needle, a little bit of continuity there, where he rips it off her neck. She stabs him, and the next shot, it's hanging around her neck again. It's Even a magical. He broke the chain. It's magic. Yeah. Right? Clearly, it's the power of the chain. That's what that one does. And uh, and he goes, she goes drive, and they freaking take off. And this is where you realize that the station wagon's got a freaking rocket on the back of it. And they're dumping garbage and newspapers and, and whatever they can get in the glove oh, box. Dude, and the dad's car, we would have been. They never would have caught us. Oh, there dude. was so much crap in there, we could have thrown <laughs> in. The freaking happy <laughs> cheeseburger, happy cheeseburgers in there, chicken nuggets. All the Check under the seat for the fries. <laughs> Miller Lite, <laughs> <laughs> Miller Lite. All I thought about is, is man, if we were in his car, his work car. Oh, we would have been God. set. Which dude. one? The little yellow one? Yeah, it's always full of stuff. 
Well, she had a multiple. The blazer that bro, never went in reverse. <laughs> bro, bro would have been out of there at 250 knots. <laughs> the 94 blazer when it was a actual when that car was a blue collar yes. car. Now it's a luxury yes. car. Yeah. So, the flipping blazer is a luxury vehicle now. <laughs> know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> These guys are driving past a garbage heap and he just like runs into the garbage on purpose so he can grab more. Oh, pull, like, yeah, yeah pull over. Pull Hold over. Hey, normal this. man. Decapitation. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it in. Hold on. Let me grab this garbage here. They have the genius idea like, oh, we'll throw a map expertly and precisely out the window to block the windshield of the truck behind us. Do you know what my daughter said to that? What's that? Turn on your wipers. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) A 10-year-old just said, turn on your wipers. Yeah, this ain't Iron Eagle 3 where you can, you have wipers. I mean, just turn them on. No, but why turn the wipers when you have (laughs) Teletracker? PlayStation Teletracker. <laughs> like, you're being generous. It's like Atari Teletracker. It, it was oh, it's like 94. Atari. Yeah, it was like an Atari Teletracker. I mean, those well, with a air with a uh, gra- stick from a air. Uh, That's some airplane. Ah, the, okay. uh, yeah. the graphics maybe were PlayStation One graphics. I don't know. Those were pretty nicely smooth but graphics. But the uh, the the joystick was definitely Atari. <laughs> okay. Four hundred. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and they're just like gonna use. Use the force. It looks like them. We're looking through the targeting thing from Luke Skywalker's, you know, yeah. X-wing. Yes, <laughs> trying to stay follow on the target. Station <laughs> we're getting too close. Stay on target. <laughs> they're side. They finally they're side by side, right? They're literally bumping sides. The car, the station wagon, and they're. It looks like an armored truck that they're driving. Yeah, it was the basically one that deliver an money, truck. basically. Yeah. And Jimmy goes, "Let's see how they handle this," and turns left. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all he does. Like, they're building up to this big move he's going to make. Right. He's going to do a 360 and lose him. He's like, let's see how they handle this. And he just turns to the right, and he goes, I think we lost him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if he would have tried to sharp turn in that size of a vehicle in the armored truck, it probably would have tipped over. No, for sure. Uh, they eventually, the monster truck catches up with their Atari vision, and then um, they find a can of spray cheese to throw in the I Mr. thought of Fusion. you instantly. I know you did, because I <laughs> eat that stuff. I did. I and Dana's always like, that. don't put that in your body. That's what I'm like, <laughs> why not? That it's was good. The, that was the kidney stone joke that Jason and I were making. I'm like, probably the, the easy whiz that broke apart from hey. 1997 <laughs> for playing GoldenEye at 3. I don't care. <laughs> That's the way I live my life life and i like it hey god bless you <laughs> this freaking easy cheese sends them into ludicrous speed it was ludicrous speed too what was like what was in the can nitrous or something it's, i don't know what, <laughs> aerosol yeah Perfect. just some sort of oh. propellant in there gas but what if you're, if, it's what combustible if you, right it's combustible you look, when they open up the hatch yeah. you see flames yeah right so wouldn't that just blow back in your face <laughs> that <laughs> can would have blown their tank apart that they were burning all that Dude, in right. i can tell you that what's this gasoline dump it in the fire put it in the yeah. car why not just pour gasoline right in there i don't that, <laughs> that would I work don't know anyway they end up in an alleyway uh a Bobo he catches up to him, even though they're at ludicrous speed, but his truck can't fit, and so he ends up stuck in the alleyway, and you think, all right, Chase is over. But he kicks his way out of the truck and starts to <laughs> yeah, stalk towards the brothers with his seatbelts holding up the bottom half of oh, his yeah. pants. <laughs> Did you see that? This is the biggest fashion statement that they make, because uh, later on, Alyssa Milano has the... yeah. You're like, well, the seatbelt. You know what's cool? I'm tired of the bottom half of my pants being connected to the top half of my pants mm-hmm. with with more pants. Yeah. So we yeah. get rid of the middle section of pants yes. and just connect them with yeah. anything, a seatbelt, a, a, a string, yeah. you know, a coat, hanger. Like a coat what hanger. What do we have sitting around? <laughs> ah, we got right. tons of junk cars. Let's just get the seatbelts out it's of those. It's time the bottom half of our pants were separated from the top yeah. half. Yeah. And they can just be easy clip. You just press the button. It's yeah, right. Come right. Off. Easy. It's two seatbelts. Right. It was kind of awesome, <laughs> actually. Um, that that might not be a bad idea, right? Just easy, yeah. push the button. You yeah, get your pants. Now off. you're wearing shorts. Now, yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, perfect. Click. Uh, now you I got mean, dangling seat belts from your shorts, but you're still wearing shorts. That can't feel too good. <laughs> I'm not sure why that didn't catch on. <laughs> Playing basketball, one of those things would swing up and hit you right in the nuts. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, <laughs> just out there trying to steal the ball, you hit the button. <laughs> you don't realize that you, other guy goes running drop. down the court, and all of a sudden a buckle. And Right in the, just a nut shot right in oh, that'd be oh, terrible. right <laughs> just in the right crevice of the kneecap. You know, that side yeah, of the, that's you know, that, oh, that the side oh, of the kneecap. There's right. that little opening that yep. hits the hits, yes. hits the tendon. Oh, yep. that's the worst place like to get hit with the potatoes. Oh yeah, uh, the power core 
uh, show up who apparently spend hours pretending to be graffiti. Yes. Uh, Cause they're just there. They had no idea this alley was going to be where this. Maybe it's their only alley up. they could be in. So they're all standing facing the wall with their jackets painted to look like they blend in with the graffiti. Do we, uh, yes. do we turn around now? And I'm right. No, 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 not yet. Have they been there for six hours? How, what time is it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> they just they are there. This wall smells like piss. <laughs> Stop peeing on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bored. I've been here for freaking two o'clock. <laughs> oh look, <Okay>. gum. <laughs> I'm tired of staring at the wall. You're getting the wall next time, <laughs> Jack. I'm not. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm gonna be in the garbage can. <laughs> <laughs> I want the garbage can. <laughs> Give me the garbage can coat. When, when what they this? finally take these coats off, Mary Marion is Alyssa Milano's character. Marion and her crew look like they all just raided a Tommy Hilfiger outlet outlet mall from 1992. <laughs> it looks like the Ultimate Warriors jacket from the night, late 90s. It did. Yeah, it <laughs> the, the, the flipping graffiti, <laughs> yeah. the flipping just multicolors. When everyone paint. thought there was something wrong with his body because he would never take the jacket off. Yeah. And I was like, did he get in a freaking car accident or something? <laughs> He's got horrific scars. Oh my God. Take it off, man. What are we doing here? <sighs> they're, they're able to chase off. A Bobo sees the power cord like, we'll, we'll come back some other time and they just leave. And uh, the power core is like, we didn't come to help you. We came for this. Again, how would they know this gang net link up? This is the little kiosk that goes into the gang IMDB, right? <laughs> yeah, pretty yeah. much. This pretty is much. what they came here for. They knew how they know a Bobo was going to end up in this alley. Who knows? Right? I didn't know. Well, he we probably didn't see them because they have the coats that look like the walls. They're probably just They're hanging just out by walls alley. all over the city. <laughs> They're in every alley. Right. Okay. That's, yeah. that's the only way they could do it. Melissa Milano, guys, in this movie, she sucked. I don't know <laughs> how you feel. I know, like, there's lots of Melissa, Melissa well, Milano if you fans wanna, out there. If you want to bring it up now, I, I mean, was waiting until we well, got we'll to get, We'll get awards. to there. I, I mean, there's a lot of people. I'm not even saying I'm going to give her the trash can because there's a lot of people. But in this scene specifically, the way she delivered her lines, the power core could use you guys. We could help each other. What do you say? Hold on. I got to bend over. <laughs> Perfectly <laughs> in a trench coat to pick up this. There was a lot thing. of that. Yes. Just yeah. Well, let's all stare at her butt for five seconds. Yeah. yeah right. Let's do a let's do a quick butt shot. Yeah. Well, you know, oh, we'll, we'll sure. sign up. Do we get the cool, you know, seatbelt <laughs> suspenders here? <though? laughs> right. So we can go from pants like, to shorts. I mean, part it does of the get package. Cool. Yeah. I, it might I like, be if that's it. I'm, I was gonna buy some anyway, but if I don't yeah. have to, right, I can sign up. Right. <laughs> I was gonna go down to TJ. <laughs> Max down here and see what they had, but right. I mean, if you're well, just going to give them out, it's post-apocalyptic, so it's TJ Axe. Yeah, that's TJ Axe because the Axe. M and the X were broken off. Right. right. My yeah. wife asked me, "Why is her underwear showing? Like the what? What's going on here?" I'm like, "It's 2007, honey. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's <laughs> 1994's <laughs> version of 2000. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, we cut to the Deville Theater. This is where we find out that Jimmy and Billy and Satori." have an entire damn theater it was pretty cool to themselves yeah it was pretty cool in the post apocalypse no one else wanted this place i'm not i'm gonna say this one thing about the movie i did admire the set design yeah and yeah. it was the cool. outfits and like they went all like i said i think i said uh yesterday part one <laughs> <laughs> i did say like I, that's I, something we get to say ever uh, <laughs> they said like wow the the backdrop of los angeles looks a lot better than escape from la's yes. yeah yeah <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. But the movie theater was cool. Yes. It was cool. It was awesome. Uh, they're there inside the DeVille Theater. Uh, this is where Satori's like, I must give you the backstory now. This is the medallion. Your dad gave this to me. I know I've known you since you were kids, and I don't know why I've never told you about this before, but I'm going to do it right now while we're eating cereal. Your dad gave me this medallion. I took care of you, and I had to break it in half because it was too powerful, and people wanted it. How, how does she break? a gold-plated medallion in half. <laughs> With her teeth. I don't know. Nitty needle. Right. Just right <laughs> in the right one. spot. The power of the needle. <laughs> right. And then he's eating a bowl full of marshmallows. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Funny story is, like, we used to do that with Lucky Charms oh, as yeah. kids. My kids do just it, too. Pull yeah. all the marshmallows out and eat that. Yeah. You can buy it now, just the bag of the marshmallows. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. Lucky Charms with just char I don't know, was it, what was it called? Lucky Charms marshmallows only? No, you just go to, like, Fleet Farm or something. They literally have a bag, a bag of marshmallows there from, yeah, bro. like, or, cereal marshmallows. Do you remember when Crunch, uh, uh, Crunch Berries just became All Berries? Do yeah. I remember? I remember the day. I remember where I was. <laughs> what are you talking about? They I'm just like, dumped it All Berries when, in there. When they did that, <laughs> I'm like, F it, All Berries. Lucky Charms <laughs> is missing out on this because you could just do All Marshmallows. Right, oh. and they'd sell... 
They they pr- print money over at Lucky Charms. <laughs> they would. They would. All right. They help the and they'll help the dentist. They will. <laughs> they will. Right. <laughs> so vicious circle. <laughs> we go back to Shuko's bad guy headquarters, and this is where Abobo tells them, "Oh yeah, we just tried to raid these guys, and they had this stupid medallion. I thought it was worthless. I didn't know it was something that you wanted." And they can, now they can just pull up Billy and Jimmy on some database, and they know their freaking address. They're like, oh, these guys. Live yeah, they the, got a whole database of karate build, tag teams out there. Karate tag team. It would have been awesome if, like, freaking Ryu and Ken were on that database. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the J.C. Penny jewelry salesman <laughs> and Sub-Zero <laughs> Scorpion. <laughs> no, not this one. That was these guys. Uh, it was these guys. <laughs> <laughs> there is an important plot point that comes back later during this whole monologue lash hits the lights prematurely and shuko's like lash not until i have my shades on i gotta wear my shades indoors yeah and so robert patrick puts his shades on that's important for later late kid you know everybody got that got so <laughs> one they take a bobo downstairs and there's like a torture rack he's like one of my engineering firms came up with this molecular steroids we're gonna shoot steroids straight into your dna no big deal have a seat yeah you you're know? gonna turn into a bane looking king cobra right we're right. gonna make you into a monster and uh he screams and we cut out away from that and this is where we find that marion uh, Alyssa milano lives a totally normal life in a totally normal looking suburban home yep in the middle of what's supposed to be the post-apocalypse, mm. but it's it, it's very inconsistent in its tone, and so it looks like nothing's going on, at least in this world. She argues with her dad about you know over cereal about the power core because there's some story on the news about the power core terrorists and like oh it's just misinformation. Mm. The power core is trying to do good because she leads the power core, right? And he's like no, they're just a bunch of dang terrorists. And she said she's basically trying to get him to do something. He's the chief of police, and he's like oh, at least the days are safe. You know, let's like be happy with what we got, right? And there's just it's a scene to set up the two of them to to kind of show where their loyalties lie and all that stuff. Uh, we cut back and Shuko, uh, Koga Shuko, Lash, and the two guys from Big Trouble in Little China, Al Leong and Jeff Amata, show up at the Deville Theater. Yes, because they had his address like four minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, that's just around the corner. Let's just go get him right now. Uh, he shows up and Satori's like Geisman. and he's like no 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 shut up nobody that's a dumb name it's Koga Shuko now. Nobody wants to party with Victor Geisman. Okay. <laughs> What's the but party? apparently that was his name when they were out on this dig. It's so kind of confusing, the backstory they talk about. But apparently there was some dig that Jimmy and Billy's dad was on. Satori was there. Geisman was there. And when they found the medallion, they collapsed the dig site, yep. and hid part of it or whatever. And that's how she knows Geisman because he was there. That's how he knows about the medallions. Uh, but it was kind of funny. He goes, now I'm... Sho- uh, uh, Shoga, what is it? Koga Shuko. Koga now Shuko. I'm Koga Shuko. And then the synchronized glasses removal, all four of them at the same time. Yep. Take their glasses off like they practiced it in the mirror. He sounds like an appetizer at a McDonald's <laughs> in Japan. <laughs> right. I was going to say, <laughs> is that Japanese Mikoga? for vanilla ice? The McShuko. <laughs> the McShuko. Did you see that, that uh, when uh, Marion was having breakfast with her dad, they were eating sh- uh, 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 mm, there's Shuko Krispies? Oh, oh, I did not I see didn't that. Notice that. It literally it was a box of Rice Krispies, same mascot, same everything. They just put a black bar over uh, rice and put Shuko, and it was Shuko Krispies. Oh, wow. <laughs> 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 so this guy, is a, is a he's got engineering firms. He's, he's a medallion cereal person, and, and he's a cereal yeah. magnate, I guess. I don't know. Hey, all in a day's work. Anyway, she says to him, I put continents between the medallions to keep them away from you. Like, yeah, we just literally flew on a plane over there and grabbed it. So we already totally have it. And unzips his. Yeah, because we don't have ways to <laughs> get there quickly and right. find them now. Right. It's 1994. Uh, it's 2007. Right. Right. Come on. Uh, cue the slowest knee to the stomach of all time. Yes. Okay. Did you see this? When, when Satori's like, run, guys. Womp, 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 womp. Oh, Robert Patrick's trying his best to sell it, but that right. thing, that was like the boat or we've joked around before about. Uh, oh, with Hogan got taken out by a Santa <laughs> yeah. on the top of a church? <laughs> yeah, like, right. Come on, man. Even Dana was laughing about how slow the movements in this first part of this fight were. They all kind of book out of the way. The 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 Jeff, Jeff and Al chase the boys in separate directions, and Satori keeps fighting with Robert Patrick there. Uh, Satori knocks Shoku to the ground, 
but he's you know how like when somebody's smoking they got a cigarette between their fingers like yep. this yeah and they knocks him to the ground and he falls down and he's still trying to like hold the hold cigarette, the cigarette <laughs> while he's yeah. getting up do you know what i mean yes. he's like trying to fight and not lose his smoke yeah and it just reminded me of, like not to bring up dad again but we like try to play catch with dad and he try to do it without putting his beer down yeah. you know what i mean right be like, no i can i can still do this at the I same time he'd be like one hand in the glove with and the you beer hit the can and, and it explodes <laughs> <laughs> he's like just put your smoke down, dude. You're in the middle of a fight, and he's getting up with his wrist just as to not let his smoke go. Uh, Jimmy Jimmy f- uh, fights with Al Leong, and this is where I thought it was really clear the difference between the two because Jimmy gets a broom, basically, which turns into a staff, and he's yeah. doing all these freaking twirls and stuff, yep. and Al Leong's awesome. And so these two have this awesome fight where they're twirling the freaking sticks around and fighting and everything. I'm like, yes, these two guys are badasses and can fight. They knew what they were doing. Meanwhile... Baby Billy over here is throwing basketballs and gumballs <laughs> yeah. at Jeff Amata. Yes. And Jeff Amata has to sell getting knocked out by one kick to the sternum. And falling on balls. And, and falling, falling on, on balls, balls and gumballs yeah. and whatever else. Meanwhile, yeah. Mark DeCascos over here, freaking Jackie Chan. Doing, you yeah. Know, Ninja like, sh- and Awesome. Yeah. Selling everything. Selling right. everything. <sighs> Al Leong falls down after, you know, in the middle of this fight and freaking... Billy comes over and traps his ponytail in a suitcase. Yeah, I don't yeah. understand that. Like, that's going to keep him down. And he goes, This guy is such a head case. Yeah! <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> because later on, when Al comes back and he's pouring gasoline around the theater to, to burn down, he's still got the suitcase on his <laughs> ponytail. <laughs> so obviously, he can stand up with it on. Right. Yeah, I don't. I didn't understand. That. Or you know, because your hair isn't going to just immediately slide out <laughs> from the suitcase, Especially, and the suitcase will fall and right. tear whatever few strands didn't slide out out of your head. No, and Ali Young is always working up a sweat, so he's got that you know sweaty, greasy stuntman hair. Yeah, right. That's coming right. Oh out. yeah, that's going to slide out for sure. <sighs> Shuko monologues about how he was on the excavation with her. Blah 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 blah. And at this point. A bobo comes back in after getting the molecular steroids, and dude, looking like a giant nutsack, just walks right <laughs> in the <laughs> freaking theater. Am I wrong? No, he looked no, like he an looked, inflated yeah. cobra sack. <laughs> dude, yeah. it, it it looked like that's what I said. I immediately I was like, that dude looks like a nutsack. It was like, <laughs> no, it looks like the head of a baby crowning out of a out of a vag. Is that what Dana said? Yes, <laughs> crowning. <laughs> Crowning out like somebody giving birth, like this was his face, and then around him was the oh birth canal. My God. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it looked gross. It yeah, look and gross. I know they're just trying to make him look like because he looked kind of weird in He's the video all game. Extra roided up. That's and how he everything, looked. Right, but the the video game sprites weren't made to look realistic. They didn't have to right. make him look like. That. I was trying to find the characters from the video game. Like, oh, is yeah. a Robert Patrick character from the video game? Or no. Uh, yeah, so I guess now's as good a time as any. They they really barely followed the game at all. Okay. I mean, we had this at the house. I was talking about it with Rachel yesterday while we were in the hospital <laughs> about how she's like, Double Dragon, did we play? I was like, yeah, we had it on the NES yeah. back in the day. And it's just a side-scrolling brawler game. And it was about these two brothers who were going to find this girl that had gotten captured. And and Lash, I mean, there was, there was women characters that had whips in there, but it wasn't like one character named Lash. Yeah. And the and the Apobo guy was this big dude that come out that looked kind of weird, but it was an it was an eight bit game, so right. they were just trying to make him look big. Yeah, they little they translated it literally into the film. <laughs> he so, did look like an eight bit yeah. <laughs> video game, right? Guy. Right. But th- so they 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 wanted to be super accurate with that guy, but nothing else because they were just street fighters in Double Dragon yeah. the game. Right. It was just about like they weren't afraid to bite, throw elbows, knee people in the face, whatever. It, and in this, for some reason, they decided to make him like advanced martial artists, which is never really what Jimmy or Billy were in the video. They were just street fighters. They were just street yeah. fighters. What? Do you know what I mean? This is what's so funny about it. It's like Street Fighter, that movie that's right behind Mueller, followed the yeah. game to the T and accept its ridiculousness. Yeah, but we love but, it. Yeah, we love it. Yeah. And then you got Double Dragon, which on paper and video game is a really cool story. Yeah. yeah. Two brothers right. going after somebody that's been kidnapped and you yeah. got some crazy bad guys. And nothing, no ridiculous medallion whatsoever. No, and they could have just, it didn't have to be post apocalyptic. It could have been on the streets of New York, make it, you know, you're, you're, make it in the 80s or 70s where the streets of New York were really gritty and grimy. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, and there could be gangs and they literally have to, f- it's a street fight, modern day, 
they've got to work their way through the gangs to get to the girl. Yeah. And it could yeah. have been a great movie. It didn't have to be set freaking they, with all this crazy technology. They in threw everything at this movie in the kitchen sink. They just let's just do yeah. it all. That's Every right. idea. Bonkers. We won't say no to anything. Yeah. It's just you can imagine the executive saying, "Yeah, yes, set it in 2007." Yeah. Sounds good. I don't even yeah. think the game was set in a post-apocalyptic. No, it was no. set in the 80s because it came out in 1987. Yeah. Right. So it's right. set in 86. They were just street fighting, going from place to place. So I, I, I don't know. It's, How many lines are on that executive desk? Uh, lots, uh, because <laughs> this dude comes in. Oh, Bobo comes in, and I don't like. They're all freaked out, but. The thing can barely walk. Why are you afraid of it? Right. Like, you, like, you can <gasps> run away from it. Can't move his arms. I mean, barely, it moves like Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. It's like the kid from Christmas anywhere. Story that couldn't get right, up once yeah. he fell over. You know what I mean? Right? Like yeah. That's, Randy. That's a, Randy. It's yeah. about how he moves. <laughs> Just, <yeah. laughs> you know? Arms straight out. Arms like, straight out. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Come on, guys. Wait for me. <laughs> right. And, and, and Satori comes out and freaking, what, kicks him into a... He falls six feet into a net. She throws a punching bag into him. Swings That's a punching bag into him. Swings a punching yeah. bag into him. He breaks a, a rope that was there for some reason and then falls through a bunch of tables. Well, six feet, yeah. Like yeah. six feet. But he can't get up. Because and he's like, he I'm done. Gets caught in like yeah. a net or something. Well, he yeah. was a really tough yeah. person to eliminate there. It's yeah. not that hard to fight him. <laughs> no, it's right. not. I mean, it's like, realistically, if you come up against a guy that big, you're like, okay, there's two ways I can go about this. Yes. I either run away. A valid choice. <laughs> Or go for the knees, or yeah, the, or the nuts, and try to stay away from his and arms. He's just, yeah, right. you just be faster, be that's faster, right. you, that's it. and it's not hard because he can't move. Can't hit yeah. what you can't see, baby. Yeah, that's right. Satori, who we find out is fake Satori, because Shuko has these shadow powers. He has possessed her, and so he's like control of yeah, her he's body. Yeah, got the soul medallion, yeah. and so he took he took out. You know, through Satori's body, took out a bobo to make it seem like why, oh, why Satori's have, helping them. And why you have to dive into the floor because hold on, let me transfer through the floor. <laughs> it's got to go <laughs> shadow <laughs> into floor. Yeah, you into you have her. to have some sort of conduit. It's like yeah, electricity. It. But it's going to jump straight into her. That's kind of right. aggressive. Yeah. Uh, okay. I guess so. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> no, it was weird. He would like turn into a shadow. It was like Peter Pan's shadow. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Following after him, <laughs> right. she tried to run away. <laughs> Pretty much followed on the floor. <laughs> It's weird. And can I say, I mm-hmm. as soon as she showed up, as you know, as Satori, yeah. I always want, I always keep on to say Suntory because I'm whatever. always thinking about the the uh, whiskey, but whatever. I'm well, like, you won't have to worry soon. She's not in the movie anymore. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> I'm like, I knew right away. I'm like, it's Kuka Shugo, Kuka Shugo, Shugo. I'm like, it ain't her. You, t- you two dopes. No. <laughs> Billy and Jimmy, how are you even still alive? How do you breathe? God. You couldn't tell it wasn't her, that she was possessed. I how mean, have you survived on. this long? Right. <laughs> she I, walks up and she's like, what's up, guys? It's totally me, Satori. <laughs> right. Uh, hey, deep voice and everything. Hey, hey guys. Uh, I just got done with a cigarette. That's why my voice is a little deep the, and froggy. Give me the medallion and I'll protect you. And they're like, uh. Yeah. And he's and then, and then her, her voice changes to Robert Patrick's. Give it to me! And just yeah. reaches yeah. for it, right? right. Like, oh, dang, dude. Because it's just hanging around Billy's neck. Yeah, dumbass Billy has this thing hanging out in the open the whole movie. Stuff it in your pants, man. When he Put first walks somewhere. up to Shuko, I'm like, dude, why don't you just grab it? It's right there. Yeah, and right. He tried to, but he was he moved so slowly. Give it to me! That she could give the slowest knee to the stomach right. of all time. Right. <sighs> and then uh, they end up shoving her into like this little you know chain link fence enclosure. And Shuko's like, oh, no, you guys just did the worst thing ever. You locked her in a fence in a flammable theater. And so the bad guys come out with the gas can yeah. and start pouring it all over the place. Huey and Lewis. <laughs> Huey and Lewis. <laughs> Huey Could have stopped laughing when I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> Their names are Huey and Lewis. <laughs> WTF is going on here. I'm, Hold on. I'm, meanwhile, I'm sitting there going, oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> we need names for these guys. What we should call them. It's yeah, meanwhile, Huey and Lewis and the news are playing in the background. Don't I've got it. Anybody. Huey and Lewis. <laughs> Don't need money. Don't need friends. <laughs> Don't need a credit card to ride, ride this train. train. Oh, my God. Uh. <laughs> Gotta get back in time. Huey and Lewis. Uh, and, but I'm looking at this enclosure going, this seems like it'd be super easy to get her out of, personally. I mean, Mark uh, Diasco's all he has to do is kick it, and the thing should right. explode in a thousand pieces. But he exactly. does it. They're like, 
what do we do? Oh. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe just keep pulling on the fence because that's all they do. Satori. So Every time I climb a chain link fence to get away from something, the damn thing falls on me. That's right. <laughs> Broke just climb on, someone just, just start climbing it. <laughs> they, lit, they light the fire. The theater is now burning. And they're just like, maybe if we just keep pulling on it. Meanwhile, Satori, who weighs all of 90 pounds, kicks it twice and it flies open. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So, okay, not that hard to get out of then. She shoves the boys, Jimmy and Billy, into the alley, but then closes the door and stays behind. That did not make any For sense. For what reason? To like to accomplish what? I don't. Uh, she's she's she fell victim to plot explosion. Right. Yeah, yeah. that was literally what it was. They had to movie. get rid of her somehow. Exactly. But, but the plot that that self, that story, did not make any sense. Right. Like, no. What, what? What? Where were you going with that? Like, no. It was literally like there was. I can probably could guess what happened. There was a draft two, draft thirty-seven. And that's exactly yeah. what it was. They got the they got the pages mixed up because <laughs> they're trying to do that movie moment where like you go, I'll stay behind and buy you time, but, but that doesn't even what? happen. Everybody left, but that works with if you have immediate Im- immediate danger, right? To but they yeah. for plausibility, right? But everybody left. She, it wasn't like she was sacrificing herself to prevent no. anybody from coming out the door after them into the alley. No, because Bobo was knocked out at the bottom of yeah, the stage, he's, and all, everybody else left. And and Shoku is a shadow guy and is not going to blow up anyway. Right. So what do you? You're accomplishing nothing by staying behind. Right. She shuts the door, just gets punched in the face, and she falls down and dies. Uh huh. Yeah. And right. the building explodes. And Jimmy and Billy didn't really get much of a head start because they kept banging on the door, going, "Satori, what yeah. are you doing? Right. Who's going to make me marshmallow?" cereal. That's right. I have to eat the regular cereal now. You buy I have to eat Cheerios now. <laughs> I mean, the explosion, like, like, props right here again. The yeah. explosion did look pretty cool. It, like, no, it, it had legitimacy. The explosion was awesome. For $7 no, million, dollars, they they yes. had some moments where they're like, okay, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, some of the explosions were good. We will yeah. continue yeah. to give people props when the filmmakers do the right things. And the, the explosions here and later on in the river, I thought those were all yeah, really well, were well done. Because you had to do them for real back then. You couldn't do a CGI explosion. No. I so mean, you actually had to blow stuff up. Even CGI explosions now, depending on who's doing them, can be me. Yeah. Yeah. Some if you some if they don't if you don't know it's CGI, that means they did a good job. Right, correct. Know? Right. But the ones where you can obviously tell, you're like, oh no, okay. <laughs> the expendables three helicopter CGI yes. explosion. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait till we get to talk about expendables. Uh, after as the theater is blowing up around them, Shoku goes to lash them. Set a meeting with the gangs. Through them, I will get the medallion. He's going to try and unite the gangs, like the baseball gang with the clown gang and everybody together. Okay. Oh my god. And then there's a pointless scene, and I'm only pointing this out. Normally, a scene this pointless that has, and I mean literally, no bearing on anything, is something I would gloss right over. But this it cuts to Marion's little brother. He's got like an Oculus Zero oh, or whatever yeah, he's got it was, the like, VR, you know, the uh, VR, VR headset. Yeah, and he's on this freaking 3D roller coaster ride. Mm-hmm. And the whole point of the scene is for her to come in and go, "I'm, you know, Dad asked, tell him I'm spending the night at this person's house." Oh yeah, right. And then it cuts back to Jimmy and Billy. We didn't need to know that. We didn't no. need that. Served no purpose. Right. right. Next time we see Marion, she's just in with the power core. Mm-hmm. We don't need this little four second scene of her telling her her brother where she's going. Mm-hmm. Okay, how? But the fact they fully rendered a 3D roller coaster game. How much money <laughs> did they waste on this worthless scene that ultimately served no purpose? And I probably why they left it in because they spent so much dang money on it. Then probably. it's it's uh that was um Alyssa Milano's brother well, in real life. Yeah. Oh really? It is. Yeah. Oh geez. Probably trying to get him an acting gig. Yep. Something. Because that was just, sorry. That, that was the condition. She said, I'll do this movie, scene. but my brother's got to be in it. All of a sudden, we we're back in Ghost in the Machine VR land. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was like, am I looking at the sub from Escape from L.A. here? Or what? <laughs> <laughs> it's still a good movie, Mueller. <laughs> <laughs> I will stand on I, that mountain for I, Escape from L.A. I, I do it. I don't mind Escape from L.A. Yeah. I, I liked it. It was good. It's just fun to poke fun oh, at. Oh, gosh. The CGI. Oh, you yeah, I will. You can poke fun at it. I actually like that movie. And maybe I said this at the time we did a lot more than I used to rag it a lot harder, but I still will rip the CGI every oh, yeah. single chance. Oh, yeah. I liked, I liked the movie. John, yeah. hiring a company that's never done it before. <laughs> Come on. Well, maybe they did it once. They did this VR thing in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I want that guy. Well, give me the guy that did the roller coaster sequence. He's John Carpenter's covered in Doritos playing video games. <laughs> he's, on the, he's on the phone. I'll give me the guy that did the roller coaster at <laughs> Double Dragon just spewing <laughs> Cheeto dust. 
everywhere. <laughs> it's the, like football players have eye black. He's just yeah. got Cheeto black under his eyes. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> All he does is smoke weed and play video games. He he, he actually made a video game. He made. I, I know he uh, loves video games. Uh, he uh, it says I, I don't know. It's like a. I hope it's not multiplayer. I that's, mean, I know why. Yeah. That's the way everything's going now. But it's supposed to be this, this sick uh, zombie apocalyptic game. And I'm like, I, dude, that's why he doesn't make movies anymore. He just wants to play video games. Yeah, and I'm God bless him. So. Yeah. All right, so we're at the gang meetup. All the gangs are here, even some we haven't met yet. We got the maniacs. We got the clowns, the cowboy bikers, the disco infernos, <laughs> the letter carriers, the, letter, the, the, pr- the freaking mail, the, 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 the preppy guys, the <laughs> the adults dressed like children gang. Oh. Remember the guy, the little beanie with the yeah, spinning I mean, thing. Yeah. The, the stunt man in that. The Mohawks <laughs> legitimate, yes. very. Great acolyte stuntman yeah. got talked into putting oh, a little propeller little. on his head. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that paycheck all, better be awesome. And there's all these gangs around. And then randomly in the middle of them, there's just a couple dudes. And I'm like, what gang is this? It's just like dads with t shirts tucked into their jeans. You know what I mean? Like yeah. with the braided belt. I'm like, yeah. totally normal dad guys. <laughs> Church Sunday. Church Sunday. <laughs> church Sunday. <laughs> These are my church clothes. <laughs> church. Just came from church. Sorry. Can I ask a question about the mailman gang? Is that a gang that dresses like mailmen, or are they mailmen? Because they had mail. They had mail. <laughs> yes, just, they just, did. So is it just the mailmen? Where was Sinbad? <laughs> <laughs> Jingle all the way. So you know I'm not stable. You know I'm not stable. That's right. He had his knee-high socks and a safari hat. Oh, but, you're the man that puts the recycling in front of the mailbox and my safari hat in the summer. I th- I don't think, I think all these other guys were gangs. I think that was just the mailmen. I think those were the real mailmen. They were my favorite part of the movie. <laughs> I don't know if it is. <laughs> I did. one of them swinging the bag. He's just swinging, swinging the bag. bag around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope those letters oh. aren't important. <laughs> Amazon going to be pissed. <laughs> People just That's if, if this took place in 2024, there'd be the Prime Gang. The Prime, the prime would. Gang. Oh, would. Oh god, yeah, for sure. Thing, You'd have the Prime Gang, the, the, the Swifties, the, the U-liners. <laughs> <laughs> they'd have the Prime trucks, but they'd all be like. With spikes on them and stuff, yeah, and like right. post-apocalypse. Right, yeah. I would not oh. be starting the furniture gang because you're not getting far away. <laughs> but hold on, me just stand right there. I'm gonna pick up this nightstand, <laughs> throw this couch <laughs> at you. Yeah. That'd be perfect. Like a clothesline, we'd just tag team and just run against. Dude, I would be the, yeah, the leader go. of the podcasters. <laughs> we'd be we wielding microphones <laughs> like swords. I'm big mic stands, you know what I mean? And that'd be awesome. Yeah. Be like, let's just dive right into this, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> God. I'll just uh, be the consultant gang with the two bobs right, and right. just go around like you're fired, you're fired, get rid of him. <laughs> Not gonna work here anymore. Being pulled, just being pulled by a tractor yes, and a giant right. like yeah. Right. Just yeah. Just yeah. Smoke yeah. I love you're it. Fired, you're fired, you're fired, you're <laughs> fired. I love it. I, I do want to call it the maniac's leader is played by a screen legend, Michael Berryman. Did you recognize the guy? The, no. the weird looking dude that was that got force choked by a shadow shuko? Yes, yes. Uh, he's from the uh, West Craven Hills. Have I. Yeah, that's what he's I, done tons of horse. And then that's what he's best known for. Yeah. Richard Clean. Yeah. The guy from Cyborg. Yes. I hate water guy. Yes. Yes. He was talking in the crowd. It was awesome. I'm like, why was that guy not one of the bad guys? And then what it that, I know. Like, what is going on here? It was it was it was awesome. And I like seeing Michael Berryman in there. But he gets, like I said, Shuko rolls in, he's like, uh basically like so go like uh so uh all the gangs, uh I'm now your leader. Uh <laughs> so you're all gonna answer to me. And there and of course this guy, Michael Berryman's like, Well the hell we are, and he gets turns into his shadow self and Force chokes him like Darth Vader. Yep. Yeah. Just kills the guy right there. And everyone like pauses for a second. And they're like, yeah. yeah. Right. I guess Start celebrating male gangs <laughs> doing the lasso with their. We listen to this guy bags. now. Yeah. This guy just force chokes somebody. Vanilla Ice Supreme Court Justice. <laughs> oh, my <God>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Hot off his 10th consecutive That's record right. label. Just I'm got sorry. back from the desert thinking. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Running, doing oh. parkour, construction sites. I love it. That's why they had the meeting there. That's why they had the meeting there, dude. Uh, dropping ice in girls' ears while they sleep. <laughs> no, that's not sexual harassment no, at all. Not at all. 
All right, and then this is another I'll talk about another tropey scene here. It cuts to now that Satori has died, we gotta ha- we gotta have our emotional scene by the riverside. Yeah, right oh, with yeah. Jimmy and Billy and the what was it? Saxophone. Is we're it, a, we're officially what was the synth in this? It's scene? a synth, like yeah, because we got rid of the guitar in the eighties. Yeah, now it's the synth, synth in the nineties. Yep. Well, we're officially pedestrians now. You Chuck's, weren't. You weren't before. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, Anyone that's crossing the road is a pedestrian, yeah. Jimmy. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, my God. He's freaking Chucks. He just pulls a cheese whiz Mr. Fusion out. Like, oh, I guess this ain't any good anymore. No. Should have ate all the cheese first before we put that in there. <laughs> Chucks Billy's lunchbox into the river. And then they do, they do another shot of it in the river. I know. Like, yeah. uh, was there something in there that we needed <laughs> to know about? We don't know what's in that. I'm like, are we coming back to this? Yeah. I'm like, is this going to float up to the gangs and it's going to be something that gangs need? Or and no, all, just all of a sudden it turns into Rocky Three. At least act like you care. <laughs> all right? I'm so tired of your plans and all your planning. No more plans. Jimmy, this isn't a karate tournament. You know, it's just they're really going for it. And it's so, <laughs> so crap. I'm going to say it now. The, the Cassos carried the movie the best of his ability. <laughs> I got no problem with Mark DeCasso. No, I thought he was He good. brought legitimacy to the film. But I, the writing is so The writing's cringy. bad. I'm not saying his acting, depending on what he does, his acting could be yeah. sparse, but... He does pretty. He does okay. He does say. I mean, Satori died five minutes ago, and Billy's like, "I'm sad." And he just goes, "Jimmy goes, get over it." Yeah, yeah. get over it. Like, bro, it literally happened five minutes ago. J- Jimmy, you gotta get a new haircut. I don't you know. didn't like the the middle part. Oh, it was so uneven. <laughs> <laughs> just gotta cover my eyes. This was a cool. year after. Um, what was the big movie he did? Uh, Something about heroes or uh, oh, oh DeCascos? Yeah, DeCascos. Oh, hold on, let's find out. It was ninety three. Yeah, it was ninety three. You know I got it. I've got it up here. All right, let's see. Only the strong. Yes, that's yes, what I remembered yes, it off the top of my head. Okay, yes. only this was a year after Only the Strong, which is like his most famous like lead part solo movie that he ever made, and then he followed that up with freaking Double Dragon here. So great move by uh, Mark DeCascos there. <laughs> uh, they finally, after they yell at each other, was like, we have to stick together, man. You're right, brother. I love you. I'm pretty sure they're not brothers. Um, they wa- they end up walking right into a gang hideout. Like, just, every gang member is just sitting there the just tapping their yeah. freaking pipes on their hands. Oh, God. There's like 47 guys. Got the lady, like I said earlier, yeah. swinging swing the, freaking, the bag. Yeah. Oh, this is... <laughs> I want... Like you didn't notice you're about to walk into 50 gang members? 50 dudes. <laughs> and we're not making this up. No. Scott Wolf <laughs> from from Bum F, Michigan. Party of Five. Party of Five <laughs> walks into 50 dudes with Mark DeCascos. And, <laughs> and what'd they say? Oh, God. They said, got a, got the t- it's a daytime. Why are you guys out here? Yeah. Right. You got the t- oh, yeah you got daytime. You're like, yeah, I got to watch. Like, like, yeah, it's like, like it's time risk. for us to get the medallion from you and... All hell breaks loose. Oh, yeah. All hell yeah. legitimately breaks loose. You're beating guys with traffic cones. Someone unlocked the uh, archive door to um, Michael Bay's yes. <laughs> explosives. <laughs> All that stuff starts going off. Clowns are catching pipes to the nuts. <laughs> the dude, mailmen flying everywhere. We got special delivery. Just Air jumps mail. off the top of jumps. a thing. <laughs> what did he think was going to happen? That they're going to wait down there for you? Right. Yeah. Oh, While you're on. falling from what seemed like three stories up. Oh in the god, it yeah. was terrible. He's, they're just like, oh, okay. And they just step, step out of the <laughs> I, I laughed. I rewinded about four times. I couldn't stop laughing at that. <sighs> that someone literally just did a suicide <laughs> belly <laughs> flop onto the ground. And they thought that was <laughs> and he that was good himself. writing. Right, writing right. to to have him do this. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Oh, let's have him jump off a tank, like belly flop into this mud and say airmail. Right. Yeah, that's comedy. At, at a height that landing on your stomach would kill you. Yes. Yes, <laughs> okay. yes absolutely. Even if it's in the mud, yes. Insane. You will oh, die. God. Freaking biker gang starts to ride at them, but they're on bicycles. Yes. Yeah. Not, Hold on. Like, you know. <laughs> they took the clown's bikes. <laughs> <laughs> Get off crazy. this clown! <laughs> They're fighting. Marta Cascos is is kicking dudes. Little you know, grown adults dressed like kid gang catches oh one in God. the face, and they end up hiding in a boathouse because they're on this river. They shot this in Ohio. This is like some river in oh, Cleveland, okay. I think. Okay, okay. Rhyming not to go to Cleveland. <laughs> 
I'm and joking. I'm sure Cleveland is The lovely. gangs are trying to break down the boathouse. Boof, 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 boof. No, we already ripped on Cleveland. We did Howard the Duck. So oh, okay. You but you notice how they're beating on the... They're not really... Yeah. like They're so half-assing it. Yeah. They're just like, we're they're, really trying to break... Because the thing's made of cardboard. It'll right. just fall right, right over. It's made out of like cheap siding at Menards. <laughs> hey, big money at Menards. And there's an important plot point here because they say, like, should we swim for it? Because it, it's a boathouse. There's the bottom of the... They could dive into the water yeah. inside. Right. Mm-hmm. And he goes... In that sludge, that's liquid death, man. We'll melt if we go in there. Everybody got that? That's important. That's it's a important. very important piece of information. Yes, it is. They cannot get out in the water because it's toxic and they'll die. So they end up shooting out in a boat. Well, it's like a wave runner. It's a jet. Yeah, it's a, they put a boat a, around a jet a ski. Boat frame around yeah, a jet ski. That's what they did. They well, still had the handles. First they tried the motorcycle. Oh, that I was forgot in there. about the fell to pieces. And it fell apart. It must have been from and Amazon. And then they, they, you see them on their face. They're like, oh. And all of a sudden they come out with this jet ski that they put a boat skin around. <laughs> right. It looked like it was pre-made for Waterworld. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. It busts through the what, door of the What do we have house. left over from Waterworld? Let's bring that in here. <laughs> Give me the double dragon jet ski. <laughs> and, and you're like, they're scot-free, right? They're going to get away. Yeah. But no, unfortunately, the jet ski gang was just apparently waiting <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, the rubbers. after them. Just like in Waterworld. Yeah. But- the was the are jet just ski out gang there. just sitting out on their jet skis watching the fight like just bored as hell like they're never going to come out here <laughs> it was like <laughs> was the like condor a- man where they were just sitting <laughs> in the bay like yeah. all right we're just That's sitting right. here we'll just sit, sit here, here watching yep. the fight like man we never get to fight because we, we got to be the jet ski i always gang. feel bad for those guys in video games because <laughs> you start a mission and then you go know, like all right here's an enemy and you guys see these enemies just chilling right. and, yeah. and you're just like yeah i'm do not I, going do i have to go after them do i have like these guys got a bad job that's right i don't want to they're bored watching everyone else, and that you got to know when they when they took off in the boat, those jet ski gangs were like, "Yes!" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All they went for, they're standing on they're it, sta- they're, they're shooting, the- they got boat rockets like it's McHale's Navy, <laughs> but except they're not going straight, they're going up in the air, they're just I know, going they're just right. up, yeah. blowing up on the banks of the river, just huge what explosions. Did that, what did that purpose? What did that do? I don't know. Just do some explosions. We got, hey, we I'm, got explosion budget. Not, Let's use it. I'm not complaining about the look of it. I'm just like, what did that do? It's supposed Nothing. to look like they're driving through a flooded part of LA because there's still some skyscrapers that they do like matte paintings to yeah. look like they're sticking out. So there's a bridge clearly going across this river, but yep. they try to make it look like it was actually a flooded overpass. Yep. So at the top, which is now underneath the bridge, there's like a street sign like Hollywood this way or whatever. Right. And so like one of those green ones you'd see on a highway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they end up crashing through it and it explodes like a bomb was taped to the back of it. <laughs> and you you watch it, the second they hit it, they're still on it, and it explodes. Yeah, right. And I'm like, man, I've seen a lot of movies where someone's strapped to that thing, they're dead. <laughs> that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Boom. And so the jet ski game's like, get some divers out here for the medallion. We got them. They're dead. And they take off, right? Oh, my God. You ain't finding that thing. No, first of all, no. It's incinerated. But two... Cut to the boys, Jimmy and Billy, coming up under the They were swimming underwater and now are just treading water yeah. in the supposedly liquid death that they had just talked about, how yeah. it could kill them. And now they're just like, well, if you get it in your mouth, you get diarrhea for a week. And they start to swim. Nothing happened. They were fine. Yeah. yeah. Not just were they fine. They get out of the water and their clothes are totally dry. They're not just dry. They look freshly laundered. Yeah. Uh, like that. that. That water has magical powers. Remind me to jump in that water. That's right. what I'm saying. If anything, you should be swimming in it. Yeah. Right. Clothes come out clean and dry. Don't set up a plot point 30 seconds before you then contradict it oh, yeah. down the road. Happens a lot in this movie. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. It does. All right. Back at Bad Guys HQ. <laughs> Back at Avengers Tower. <laughs> Shuko. It kind of looks like it. It did. I'm like, oh, they just swapped the A with an S. But obviously, this was way, way before this. That's but. right. Shuko is yelling at Lash. How hard is it to get a necklace out of the water? And Lash is like only lying in an hour. The river is really deep. <laughs> <laughs> then drain it. Right? Empty uh, it, he said. Pull it. the plug. Just empty. <laughs> We'll just get the hoses out there and we'll just, just drain it. Just, How do you drain a river? Like with buckets, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Who's going to be like, hey, hey, hey uh, uh, Chuck, you're going to drain the river today. Shuko right. wants it. Where are we going to put all this water? <laughs> Where are we going to put all this water? I don't know. Figure it out. Send it over to Manhattan. <laughs> Huey, Lewis, get out there. Pull the plug. We'll put it on a train. We'll put it on a train. We'll send it across the country. Oh, my God. Oh, dude. And this is when when Huey and Lewis show up. And this is when I realized they were called that because he goes, Huey, Lewis, any news? 
Yeah. I just, oh, I did not catch that part. Yeah. <laughs> I love that button. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they literally put a pun in there about Huey Lewis and the news. This is this is the moment we were like, okay, wait, am I, I'm not supposed to be taking any of this seriously, right? But is it a spoof? Is it a comedy? Is it – what is it? Because they tried to set it up at different points with different tones. Yeah. And none of it ends up working. So I don't know. Whatever. The boys, Jimmy and Billy, are like, time to take the fight to Shuko. So let's go find the power core. They can help us. But they're busy currently spinach torturing a Bobo who they – took from the wreckage of the blown up theater the power core did mm, yeah. and now Alyssa Milano's force feeding a Bobo spinach to try and get yeah, intel about Shuko he had a spinach bong there just, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> just, right. just it's like, like Frank the Tank from right. old school yeah, right. yeah. oh my god it's just uh, piping spinach into his mouth that wouldn't make it down that pipe Mm-mm. no it wouldn't it would get clogged up I'd, instantly no yeah way. yeah and, and uh, gross you know all you're doing is making him stronger I've seen Popeye yeah, right. I mean, right. That, that you want to give that guy spinach? You know what Good happens. Lord. Good God. Uh, the guys, Jimmy and Billy, fall into the base and into a pile of kids that were wearing cross colors like Africa. Yeah, because they didn't Yankees follow theater. the advice to use the other door. I love the 90s. I know. There literally was a sign <laughs> that was just like. So use the other door. No, that's a trap. Right. Use this as well. I'll just fall in. Mm. Marion does a whole expo dump to just catch everybody up. Oh, guys, so what you're saying is he has this magical medallion that has special powers, and you have one also. And if he gets both of them, it's going to be like she's like recapping the whole movie yep. while they're walking along. Finally, she goes, All right, prove it, make it do something. But they can't, the whole plot point through the movie is, is Billy doesn't know how to get his half of the medallion to do anything, how to work. Right. They're like, he's like, Jimmy, hold it with me. Maybe if we do it together, you know, and that doesn't work. Yep. And he's tried every magic word and whatever. He can never get the thing to do anything. But eventually he goes, are you going to help us or not? And they're like, welcome to the Power Core. The Power Core is going to help you go get Shuko. Here's your graffiti coat. Here's and your graffiti coat. Seatbelt pants. And your Tommy Hilfiger, mm. you know, stuff. <laughs> but first, got to find me a small vent to bend over in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's right. coming up right now. Because they go over to Shoku, Shuka, Koga Shuka, whatever. Shukadoo's uh yeah. his uh Shipape. headquarters. <laughs> and the lobby of this place looks like the like the atrium of a mall, right? <laughs> and the freaking they call the roller boys in, like yeah. <laughs> all these guys come in and the freaking roller boys. Gary Lee leading them Gary in. Lee's in there. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting him with a razzle dazzle. Right. And all these security guards are like, oh crap, and it's a distraction. So they can go in through the vent system. When I say they, I mean Jimmy Billy and Marion. Hmm. Yeah. And this is where they fight over who gets to be closer to her butt. Yeah. Who yeah. wants to tongue punch her fart box? They literally, like, she, guys, it was so gratuitous the way they did. They took the vent off. She's talking about, I've got a plan to break the gangs apart. I know they're united, blah, blah, blah. And she literally gets down into the vent and arches her back. Yeah. Arches. And sits there for a second. Yeah. Just so they can cut back to Jimmy and Billy going, eh, 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 eh. and then they start eh. pushing and shoving to get in right behind her. Yep. So stupid. They uh, her, her her plan is even more dumb though. Her plan is to hack the gang internet to show the maniacs are getting a larger profit margin, then the other gangs will get mad and it'll incite a war between the gangs. Yeah, that seemed way overthought for what this movie was. I'm just like the gangs report their profits. <laughs> Yeah. To the, to oh, the yeah. gang net? Yeah. yeah. Well, they have like an earnings invest- call? There's like, you know, it's Wall Street for gangs. You just, you have earnings calls. You got to meet your quarterly numbers. I mean, shareholders want their return on their investment in these gangs. Are these publicly traded gangs? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I'm like, I'm like who's keeping the financials for the maniacs? Okay. <laughs> They have like the one nerd. Gang. There's like one the accountant gang. Accountant gang <laughs> the accountant. just follows behind everybody else yeah. with their briefcases. The bean counters. And their freaking uh, tape, uh, the calculators with the tape yep. that comes out yeah, of it. Right. Led by Damien Chapa. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <sighs> oh my in God. the monologuing room, Dad Cop is there to meet with Shuko in an attempt, and he's trying to pay off the cops. And uh, Lash notices. How could you not notice? They're in the vent looking into the room, Jimmy and them. And they see that the medallion is just on the table. Yeah, Shuko's medal. She could do medallion is there, and so they lower down. It's like a pin. Yeah, on they, a took, chain. they took they uh, took Marion's pin, her power core pin, That's right. whatever the hell it was, and made a little fishing thing out of it. And and suddenly they have a forty foot chain they can 
put down there. Well, he had that fishing line that he was messing around with. Oh, is that when, what it was? Yeah, it was fishing line that okay. he had since they were messing around when Jimmy threw his lunchbox in the <laughs> toxic river. So they're trying to fish through the vent. There's a whole ass conversation happening in this room. Right. They're yes. trying to fish for the medallion. And it's so obvious and yeah. loud what's happening. Lash is literally looking at the thing going Standing up and down. Standing right there. Like a confused cat. She's just following it like, yeah. huh? Like, like yeah, oh. someone had a laser pointer. <laughs> <laughs> never <laughs> never this? mind that if you even caught the medallion, you weren't getting it up through the holes yeah, it's just, in the seal. You're just going to hold it up there. Right. You see, the size of the the the, the, the pin, right. Right? how's that getting through the grate? How'd the pin, the pin get through the gate? The pin, yeah. the well, pin's because even that too was big. small enough to get through the squares. Oh, I don't think it was. It was, it was pretty big. It was huge. It was like those squares uh, were like those like pieces. That was like a piece of huh? flare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> huge. Eventually, she notices what's going on. It ends up breaking the vent with a stabby stick, and yeah. they all spill into the room. Yes, and they're like, "Oh, you said they were dead. Ugh. They're about to be." But the fight doesn't really happen in this room because no. the three of them just slide down with Jimmy and the Billy and Marion just slide down these ropes a hundred stories down into like this. Yeah, they go down without gloves. And like the yes. hive from Resident Evil. Yeah, that would I incinerate was, their hands. Right. Yeah. Oh, yes. It was a rope, wasn't it? No, yeah. it, was a, it was an elevator cable. Was it? A, a, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was like an elevator. Yeah. Or, Either way, rope or... Not. Either way, yeah, either yeah. way, you don't have any skin or muscle left on no. your hands after yeah. you're going down that thing like that. Uh, Lash and Dad are the only two, that, and, and, and Robert Patrick's character follows them down as a shadow version of himself. The only people that stay up there and keep fighting are Lash and Cop Dad. And when I say fighting, it literally... He ducks behind a table and she gets confused like a cat, like, oh, he was here, now he's gone. And then he just pushes the table over on top yeah, of her. Yeah, like, he had like a statue or something on it. That's it. Yeah. Okay, she's mm -hmm. done. Now we're down in the in the morgue slash engineering area where he made a bobo into a monstrosity. And there's all these other bodies that are laying on all these gurneys. And they're not dead, but he's like, there is some kind of suspended animation. And they're just there for him to take over their bodies to use to fight, I'm guessing. Seemed that way. Because the first Shuko, you know, Shadow Shuko goes inside of a – I can't believe I'm saying these sentences. Shadow Shuko goes into a zombie basketball player. Yeah, so I'm sure it's probably a famous basketball player. <laughs> it's yeah. just missing, apparently. Yeah. Okay. He stands up. They're fighting with that guy for a while. They end up smashing him. Then after they beat him, he jumps into like the hillbilly chrome dome dude from Judge Dredd. Yeah. <laughs> was he kind of like yeah, him? He yeah, was. he was. I was more like thinking like a mutated version of Tin Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except he, he was wearing like a Donald Duck sailor shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Who is this well, he's guy? He's like half metal. He had the, uh, you know, the like, cone head. Yes. Chrome right. Dome, yeah. Oh, my God. Anyway, Jimmy ends up being captured by Chrome Dome Donald Duck. And yeah, he gets a bear hug. He's got a like, bear hug. Oh, I'm passing out. Ugh. And so Jim, or Billy and Marion get away, and Jimmy is left behind. And the next thing we got Jimmy tied up to a chair listening to Shuko monologue, of course. And Shuko's like, oh, by the way, I totally killed your father. We're just going to introduce that plot point right here at the end of the movie. Everybody got that? Okay, just because let's just throw one more thing in. Yeah, throw it in. No one puts Mark DeCassos to sleep with a bear hug. <laughs> what kind of BS is that? Especially Donald Duck Chrome Boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? You got three strikes all, man. All right, so back at Power Core HQ, a totally unearned and undeserved romantic moment suddenly happens between Marion and Billy, and there's been no establishment at any point up to this other than no. he wants to be near her butt, that there might be some kind of romantic chemistry there. I would take Lash over Alyssa Milano. But, oh, <laughs> General Hospital girl? Yes, I'm yeah. sorry. Hot babe award right now. Oh, Lash. All right. There we go. Out of the way. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> they're having this, they're just all of a sudden they're sitting down and it's they're just like you're not alone, Billy. I know Jimmy's gone, but you've got me. I'm here. She gave no Fs about Jimmy. <laughs> no. <laughs> she was swooping in for the kill. She was. She's a cold-hearted biatch. She was like, I I wish this thing worked. What else can we do? You, I know you've tried every every magic word, and, and you've done everything you can. Was she asking for that to be pressed up against a certain member of her and, and, anatomy? Yeah. And she basically leans in, and they're here. They're about to have... A kiss when all of a sudden gang attack <laughs> puzzle workers I do I wish I had the song here I don't but there was an actual song playing I don't know if you noticed but it, it was, was pretty simple. cheesy it was yeah. like they're leaning, oh you just hear in the background 
There was a time in my life <laughs> when I loved I you. Did. I, I didn't pay attention to that sound closely. Guy. And I wanted to touch your face. The it sound so quality good. on Tubi is great, though. <laughs> know, it was hilarious. <laughs> I did not catch that. Oh, it was so good. Wow. It was so cheeseball. All right, yeah, but all of a sudden you got every different gang from all the different gangs diving through the windows and rappelling yeah. down into the... Like their special forces all of a sudden. Did you see that yes. one guy... Dive yeah. and repel, <laughs> and he went down hardcore and just. He's I like, don't know where he, he was went. like, "Ooh, ball pit!" I, he went straight to the morgue. That dude <laughs> like really forgot his safety <laughs> clip or something because he full sent it and all the way down. He's like, "I'm not stopping." I don't think. Look at this guy. He, he went in hardcore. <laughs> the medallion, get her! Bro thought he was the main character. <laughs> of this movie. This is my one chance <laughs> to break into Hollywood. That's right. Al Leong is going to see me <laughs> go balls out on this dive <laughs> through the window, and I'll be in every movie forever from now on. And now you're a paraplegic. And now I think he's probably dead. He has, um, He's Christopher Reeved. <laughs> R.I.P. Sorry. There's uh, We love him. There is this green river, really green, like like yeah. Chicago River he, at St. Paddy's Day. Yeah, the ecto cooler river there. <laughs> Melted the Irish in that river. In the middle of this room. And again, it looks like it's supposed to be toxic, but everybody's getting it's thrown in there. Surge. Yeah, that's what it is. Surge by it's then, a surge right? Because yeah, oh it's the power God. core. They're a bunch of kids. That's what was right. big in the mid 90s? Surge. <laughs> Let's have a surge pool in the oh. middle of Power Core <laughs> HQ. Surge was toxic. <laughs> <laughs> so I drank the hell out of ruined. that when I was a kid. <laughs> oh my god! That's why they weren't getting out of the water. They were like, "Yeah, this is pretty yeah. good." That was Coca Cola Company, wasn't <laughs> yep. it? Made yep. Surge. I remember. Yeah, I had man. a case because they didn't. They had that and Mellow Yellow because oh. they were trying to go up against Mountain Dew. Oh, that's oh right, my dude. god! Mount, you can't. You can't do it. Do the do. Mountain even, Dew is still even underwear head guy. I don't know if you saw him. Yeah, I saw underwear head guy. Head <laughs> just got like my wife was like, was, is that like a torn shirt? I'm like, no, I think it's underwear. <laughs> he gets thrown He's into part, the water. part of the underwear gang. <laughs> How about the one move? How about the one move that Billy pulled off where he's got a paint can attached to a rope yeah. and he just <laughs> throws the paint can to the guy on the other side and the guy catches it and he just pulls him into it's the, the same water. Uh, kamikaze crazy postal guy that jumped off the tower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he fell for Wouldn't another that actually one. Actually, work if somebody caught the thing and then you could just pull them into a when you just let it go. First off, if you're in a fight, it, why are you catching a can? <laughs> right, like, I'm like, not catching that, no. right? No, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not, res I'm not responding. Let go of the can, mailman. Uh, then Lash goes over, and Lash and a couple of her boys start beating up on Alyssa Milano, and they grab Alyssa Milano, and Lash walks right up to her and goes, who's the boss now? Yeah. Comedy. General Hospital. <laughs> I couldn't believe they stuck a who's the boss joke for Alyssa Milano in this movie. Because I don't, people over a certain age would probably, you need to be a certain age to get the joke. Yeah, yeah and you didn't. probably would in 94. In 94, yeah. you definitely would have, but now would've. watching it, no, unless you grew up in the 80s, nobody knows the show, the Tony Danza show that Alyssa yeah. Milano was I'm, on. Well, we've been Who's watching it, actually. It's streaming. Oh, is it streaming? So we, yeah, it's streaming on like wow. Hulu, so we've been watching it, but I only seen yeah. a couple episodes yeah. of that show. I just couldn't, I, I was like, I, if I still had my groan button, I would have hit it. I just, that was the biggest. You know, in the room, I was just like, uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I was like, uh, well, you can really hit the good for you if you wanted to. Oh, good. For, oh, good. Yeah, there, for you go. you. Yeah. there we go. I, what what they should have done because they they obviously just put everything in here. When Lash came in, they should have had Devo on site just singing "Whip It." <laughs> they could have Devo could have been their own gang. They could have had the Devo gang. The Devo gang would have been perfect because they had the hats. They had the <sighs> whip it good. <laughs> Yeah. If a problem comes along, you, you must, must whip, whip it. it. Yeah. Whip it good. <laughs> whip it into shape. Shape it up. <laughs> All right. I can't do it. All right. Uh, I guess I just couldn't believe that they... All we were missing was Richard Simmons in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> it. Suzanne Summers. Gosh. Thigh Jane master, Fonda. The, the thigh master gang. Billy... <laughs> <laughs> Billy grab there's a random like tree pruner just sit, laying yeah. around in this building. Right, this is the one that upset Rachel the most. She cut a web with a tree pruner. Yes. Oh god. He he swings over with this tree pruner, 
who then gets handed to Alyssa Milano. And at the time, Lash is trying to get her. She whips, actually accidentally whips, misses who she's whipping, and it wraps around a pole. Like Indiana Jones would wrap a whip around yeah. something, and then you could swing from it, yeah. right? Except it's just like a standing pole. And in order to get her whip off of it, she just continues to pull on it. Right. And she's just utter confusion like she's just oh she didn't release the off? tension on it at all right. so it would relax and maybe just keep pulling the whip well she's used to pulling and then, and and it'll just it'll just eventually come off at some point keep tension on it keep just tension. keep tension right up into the point where listen Milano comes over with the tree pruners and just clips the whip yep i lost my spot all right so jimmy <laughs> <laughs> jimmy shows up but like he was a prisoner now he just, yeah, he just shows up and he kicks two dudes in the face and he's like here to help billy but then in a stunning betrayal marty Janetti's G- billy right through the glass <laughs> <laughs> he died, he he died. died. <laughs> the sweet shit yeah. Dude, it was exactly like when the rockers broke up yeah, it was he went it right was. through a pane of glass <laughs> <At> the barber shop <laughs> <laughs> the barber shop in oh, the power right. core thing I like immediately flashed back to that when I yeah. saw this scene. Wham! Oh no, just like Marty Jannetty. <laughs> just like <laughs> Marty Jannetty. <laughs> oh God. Oh, oh man. This fight was actually pretty decent. I'm not going to yeah. lie. It was actually pretty entertaining. Yeah, because Jimmy can fight. Yeah. And you hear Robert Patrick's voice being dubbed over what yeah. he's saying. And he's telling some story about Romulus and Remus. Yeah. His yeah. two brothers from Rome. Yeah, or that's wherever. how Rome was the legend of Rome, yeah. And he's going through this whole thing, like he's like telling him a story about Rome while he's beating his ass through this whole. Did you see him back up into the Double Dragon? Yes, the yeah, Dragon. yeah, the, yeah. That's kind of meta. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> literally, there's a Double Dragon it's game double... that he ends up putting his foot through. Yes. Right? All the other arcade games have like graffiti over the label, so you can't see what they are. It's like, oh, that's NBA Jam. That's <laughs> X-Man. Yeah. There you go. That's double Dragon. Yeah. It's hey, the Street double Fighter. Dragon. <laughs> you could rip right through there. And he's just kicking, and they're exploding out the top. <laughs> <laughs> Billy still can't figure out how to use his medallion, so he just chucks it. So yeah, this thing's broken. Chucks it. Here, have it. And guess what? Turns out that's what he had to do, I guess. Is he just supposed to chuck the thing? Yeah, I guess. Then it comes to life. Like boomerang back to him, right back to him. Whoa! Now he has the power of the body. I have the power. Whereas the shadow, the power of the soul, he can turn into a shadow guy. I guess the thing is, when you have them dealing the power of the body, you just can't be hurt. Yeah, physically. He's thrown through anything. So because he got through, thrown through a concrete, concrete wall. wall. Yeah, with the most rubbery rebar <laughs> of all time. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Every time they cut through, he's coming through the rebar. Going, boing, it's just boing, extra boing. licorice. <laughs> they just use the licorice for rebar. It was awesome. He's like, "Well, I can't hurt you now because you have the power of the body." Yeah. So let's join our forces together, uh, and he just and then Billy just stands up and he goes, "Get out of my brother!" Oh yes, yeah. something I hope I'll never have to say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> If I'm ever in that situation, Bob, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm there to help, but I don't know what's happening. Okay. No problem. Right? <laughs> Get, out of, Get out of him. Get out of my brother. And oh, just God. blast him. And, and he ends up, you know, flying out of Jimmy. And uh, forearm smashes right and left. Yeah. yeah, forearms. Finally, Jimmy's like, dude, it's me. And they're back together. But right at that moment, Billy's medallion has come off. And this is when uh, Shogu Cuckoo finally gets. <laughs> Finally gets both medallions. Yeah. Yes, and you're like, at least I was like, I was legitimately like, oh crap, because they've built up the whole movie. To, he can't get both; it'd be the right. worst thing yeah. ever. The world would be over if he gets both medallions. He gets both medallions. They even go, oh shh, and they're about to say, and he goes, you said it, clicks them together, hmm. and he turns into he absorbs all the power. Like the whole city goes dark. Yep. And he turns into two versions, like splits in half, and he's like two monster samurai. They look like kind of like the makeup looks like Batman when Scarecrow took the fear toxin. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? He's just yeah. like, it looks yeah. all black and stuff. <laughs> and he, uh, they just start fighting. Each one of them fights one of them because Jimmy and Billy each have one to take out. Mm. And so far, I'm like, okay, that's a pretty cool power. I hope that's not the only thing he could do after all of this buildup. But turns out that's the only thing that he does. That's all he could do. Because a Bobo, who finally breaks out of his, he's handcuffed to a toilet or whatever. Yeah, he's, he sees his, his reflection because I don't think he's he, up to yeah. that point. He hadn't seen what he looked like. No, and he got, <laughs> he was like pissed. He's like, oh, look, I got nuts back. <laughs> <laughs> so Carrie, before I got here, Carrie's watching the last half with me, and she yeah. sees Bobo in 
in the bathroom and then she sees a picture he sees a picture and my wife thought it was lash and he goes is he staring at a picture of the whip lady and i go i don't think so no. and then he starts crying and starts making grunts and she goes is he masturbating oh. i'm like this is a night this is a double dragon it's movie. a kid's movie i'm like and no guy masturbates and cries at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta imagine it's happened at least once. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> like, where did you? <laughs> a bobo comes out crying. He walks out into this big gang fight. And I thought His he flies would do undone, something. probably. <laughs> yeah, he flies. <laughs> He's well, you know, right? so he's probably too up, big so you know to get balls out of are all shriveled up and everything. I was going to say, it's either complete opposite. He probably can't get the damn oh, thing out of the zipper. It. Right. Right. And so you think he's going to fight or something. You think he's coming out to fight. Yeah. But he doesn't. All he does yeah. is get up to the railing and yell. Uh, he punches one very poor person. In the, <laughs> it's just like, there. you're in my way. Poof. Yeah. That was it. And uh, splits his cranium. Like, well, that was And then he just shouts down because the power's out, right? He goes, Hit the lights, like down to Marion, because yeah. he knows about the thing with these like, light yep. sensitive. So Marion goes and fires up the generator, which for a second blinds the two monster samurai. Oh, lights. Eh. And all Jimmy and Billy do is just kick him in the face really hard with their little spinny kick thing. The spin cartwheel kick. That they yeah. do. And and he changes back into Shukakuku, and the freaking medallion flies off of him, and they catch it. I'm like, that's it? The only way to defeat the guy that has the double dragon, you just have to kick him in the face hard enough and it flies off. So that's why he has so much appreciation way. for Street Fighter. But just the buildup oh, yeah. was so much and then it yeah. was so nothing. Yeah. I liked Street Fighter. I love Street Fighter. I loved yeah. it. It makes me appreciate it even more yeah. watching this piece of garbage from oh, the same year. Raul Julio's monologue where he's just shouting, Lightning! He just yes. says, Spin yeah. kick, Bison, you're off the air. You're off the air. <laughs> I love Are it. Are you mad enough to fight with me? <laughs> Anyone who opposes me will be destroyed. <laughs> it's how you build up a great yeah, thing. Right. This, this yeah. was not it. <sighs> you're right. Uh, they get the, they freaking catch the, each of them catch half of the medallion. Yeah. And, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> get their half. Yeah. They, they, they go, they go to put them together, and this time Shogakuku is like, oh, sh like you said it, and yeah. they click it together. Like the mask tornadoes come out around the two of them, <laughs> yeah. right? And this guy got magical, mystical powers that he could turn into things and do all the stuff. All they get is outfits. Yeah. Yeah. That's all they get. They get the red outfit Apparently, for Jimmy, the red one and the blue one. Blue one for Billy. Yeah. They didn't have those in the game. It was just literally they had, uh, they had the just, yeah. uh, Oh um, God! The Levi I mean, cut off jeans, right? Yeah, the jean stuff. They right? were red and blue, so you knew who your character was. But they weren't that fancy. They weren't. They that weren't fancy. like samurai but, type. Right. Yeah. The problem is they didn't gain anything from it because no, they they got their outfits and then they still fought with the medallions on themselves separately. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is not understanding your source material. And so all of a sudden, Satori's head, disembodied head, shows up in a tornado. Hi, I am a, I am Satori, and I'm my head is in a tornado, and I just want to say I'm proud of you boys. Mm. Keep it up. We're all counting on you. <laughs> <laughs> just want to say good luck, you know. And, oh my and, god! And she, I wanted her to be like peace out, you know, and then yeah. she just yeah. dis her face disappears. Right. And then they just beat the piss out of Shogakuku, and uh, so anticlimactic. Yeah. yeah, it was, and, the, and then he starts going. I realized blowing up the theater was a bad idea. Whoosh, gets hit again. Oh, I'll buy you guys a new one. Whoosh, gets, yeah, like, bro, you killed their dad. You think this is about the theater? Yeah, they totally right. forgot about that. <laughs> like, like, he, like, yeah, I just blew up your theater. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. right. Didn't you say you just killed their dad? You, right. And, yeah, and killed Jimmy, their dad. Jimmy, and Jimmy literally Satori. at this moment drops that drops that info to Billy like as an aside. Oh, by the way, he killed our dad. Like right yeah. before the fight, you missed that while you missed were tied up. While you were yeah. tied up, you missed that. <sighs> anyway, they knock him out. Then, then Jimmy, who this is also everybody got that important. Jimmy's the one with the soul power. Yes, goes into shadow mode and dives into Shogakuku to control him. And the cops roll in. The cops earlier, we skipped a scene where they're just like. Cop dad, after beating up Lash, went back to police headquarters. Like it's time to take back the streets from the gangs. <laughs> That's the line. We third don't, shift now. That's we, all he does is stare out the damn window. We don't see them take it back from the gang. The next time we see them is them showing up now as the fight is over. Because the yeah. gangs are not that imposing. And they, just, they just roll in, and I'm like, I know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They're cops. Turns out it was super easy to take the streets back. Yeah. And they literally saw the lights. They're like, all you had to do. Done. All the cops tried this had 10 to do. Years ago. Just work all three shifts. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. That's all you had to do. Yeah. <laughs> These there gangs aren't hurting anybody. 
You got a freaking mailman. You can't take the street <laughs> from a mailman and some mimes? What the hell are we talking about here? I got the city council to my head off. They finally are like, Guys were like they were like all oh, the muster up this courage. None of nobody, nobody wanted to walk outside. We're gonna take the streets back. Oh. It turns out to be super easy to do. It was. Because all was. they did was roll up in there and they're like, yeah. Well, guess the streets are ours again. Cops are here. Cops are here. They cut a check because he's still controlling Sugar Hoo. He's like, uh, I think the police are underfunded and cuts them a check for hundred and twenty six million dollars. Mm. I know it's like little speakeasy check machine. Yeah, you know, that you he's talk, got. talk into it. It spits talk, out a check. It spits out a check. Gives that to the cops, and uh, they're all like doing the whole tropey. Oh, isn't it great that we're all best friends now? Right. Clap each other on the back yeah. thing at the cops end of this got movie. the streets back under control. It's all good, guys. What are you gonna do when a bobo walks up to uh, Billy? I know to Jimmy and Marion. Okay, this is also important. And a was like, I thought it'd be okay if I started hanging out with you guys and be I want to be a good guy now. And they're like, oh, yeah, cool. Can I drive your station wagon? Because they had fixed up their rocket wagon to be you know good as new or whatever. And they start going, oh, it's it's Billy has it's taken Billy. over a Bobo. Yeah. They, like, this isn't really him. Sure, a Bobo, you can drive the car, <laughs> thinking they're getting pranked. But they're idiots. They're idiots. <laughs> so stupid. This part was I was like, this is so stupid. No, go ahead. You can talk them through it. <laughs> I, it's so dumb. I don't even want to say it. So they get in the car. They think it's Billy. Apparently, Jimmy got some short-term memory loss <laughs> because he's the one with the soul medallion. Right. <laughs> and they're in the back seat. Then they're he's like, wearing it. Oh, you know what? We'll get him. <laughs> Come here, Mary, and let me kiss you, Jimmy tells her. And yeah. then all of a sudden, Billy pops out of the you know, backseat of the wagon. Hey, what are you doing? Yep. They're like, oh, my god!" And gosh. then they're like, oh, sh-. Yep. And so they the totally contradicted the whole, their whole yeah. self before by saying that Billy had a power he didn't even Just have access to. power for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end of Double Dragon. We made it. <laughs> no hospital visits. <laughs> no, we we're not out it. of the woods yet. <laughs> That's true. I know this movie sucked, okay, but I think there is a way that could have been made better. Is there? I think there is. You think there is? Okay. I think all you've got to do. How do we do it? You just add Arnold. Okay. Would Would Arnold make Double Dragon? Like, like a little, do a little Salt Bay with yeah, some like Arnold. Salt Bay Arnold. Sprinkle then a little Arnie. Yeah, in there. there you go. Sprinkle a little Arnie in there. He's a mailman. He's Hello. <laughs> Watch out. Hey, mail. <laughs> <laughs> He's any of these guys. Yeah. Right? I mean, you've already got freaking Jason Patrick as the bad guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can re team up. This is only. What, Robert Patrick. What I say? Jason, Jason Patrick. No. Jason oh, Patrick. gosh. I wish it had been Jason Patrick. No. <laughs> Robert Patrick's already the bad guy. This is three years after T2. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right? Bring Arnie in again. And, uh, you know, they already don't look like brothers. So have Mark DeCascos and Arnold be brothers. Yeah. Uh, yep. He's like, with a brother. I know we don't look alike, but we have the same mama <laughs> and the same papa. <laughs> Your father and my mother are the same. <laughs> <laughs> and they killed him. That's right, they killed him. For a stupid medallion. <laughs> so I had to break it in half <laughs> between my thighs. <laughs> <laughs> and I punched it into the earth. That's right. So <laughs> no one could find it. <laughs> But they dug it up. That's right. <laughs> Jason Smith is playing along with us uh, from the page. And welcome, right. Jason. We appreciate you, man. Thanks hey, for playing Jason. along. He goes, look, have Arnold be Jimmy and Billy. Have twin Arnies. Be, yeah. Imagine if, if there were twin Arnies. Oh, God. But would one of them be super serious and effective and the other one just be a total dip? That would be really cool. That'd be funny. Yeah. He goes, my first thought would be was to go Arnold as Bo, a Bobo. It would have taken the big bad and actually made him a villain to be feared. But then I pivoted to what what if Jimmy and Billy turned into Arnold when they get the medallions? <laughs> <laughs> like Prince Adam turns into He-Man. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. He-Man. I have the power. He goes, I could just imagine the bad guy's reactions would be like the Fratellis when Sloth rips off his shirt to show the Superman logo in the Goonies. Yeah. We're in deep shit now, Francis. <laughs> 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 That'd That's be great. awesome. That dude. would be great. That would be great. Uh, Josh Bowman also playing along with us. Welcome, Josh. We appreciate you too, man. He said, all you need to do is swap Alyssa Milano out with Arnold. 
Keep him in the same outfit, same haircut. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me so, bend over. No. <laughs> you better not be looking at my tailpipe. <laughs> that haircut on Arnold, I, that's, that would be cursed. I, <laughs> listen to me very carefully. We're going to crawl into this uh, vent. <laughs> I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> this ventilation. This is right. ventilation. But I go first. And whoever wants to follow behind me, you have to fight over it. By the way, I ate spinach <laughs> and crab cakes. <laughs> <laughs> and sauerkraut. And sauerkraut. Right. And Brussels sprouts. But Arnold sprouts. wouldn't even fit. He'd get oh, stuck. He'd get stuck. He just, he and might have be like, punch it would be bad. Roof. He'd just have his butt hanging and be like, I'm stuck in here. <laughs> Help just, me. Just Help me get me out of here. Just leave him in there for the rest of the movie. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> you guys get it. You guys get in the forklift to get this ass out of here. Because <laughs> both Billy and Jimmy slowly falling in love with him. <laughs> I'm confident that Arnold would have more chemistry with them and be more believable as a leader of a group of teenage punk revolutionaries. Plus, it would be awesome to have more scenes of him arguing with the police chief dad about the po- not terrorists. Fada. The Palakor is the only one doing any good. <laughs> That's the other thing we didn't touch on. (laughs) That's right. Because cop dad said, my daughter's doing my job for me. Yeah. When did he realize that was happening? He saw her fall out, you know, through the vent. When he fell through the vent, I guess. But even then, all she goes is, did this mean I'm grounded? Yeah. I don't know. So cheesy. Juan Ramirez also playing along. And Juan says, uh, well, I'd love to see him playing Alyssa Milano's character, uh, jorts with garter belt included. The obvious choice is a Bobo. I think that would have been hilarious. Have him, yeah. the other actor, fine. But then when he comes into the theater, it's it's Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And yeah. then at the end, he'd be like, listen, I, want to be, I, I don't want to be a bad guy anymore and do bad <laughs> things. I want to be a good, a decent person, <laughs> a decent person that would come along, and I want to hang out with you guys and go and do fun and nice things. Yeah, because... Yeah. We already beat the T-1000. That's right. <laughs> that would be so... G- and then at the end, dude, he could if, if he had fought Robert Patrick again... Hasta oh, la yeah. vista, baby. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We wouldn't have Billy Chill and out, Jimmy. Chill out, dickwad. <laughs> we wouldn't need Billy and, and Jimmy no. fighting them. No, you, you get a Bobo them. down there to fight him. And you could, they, th- this movie loved to have the meta moments, like calling out who's the boss, right. and that kind of stuff. Exactly. So when he when the they put the medallions together and he turns into Arnold, yeah. Robert Patrick could have been like, oh, not again. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Crap. Right? And he could have been like terminated. That's right. You are terminated. <sighs> you want to give this movie some awards, guys? Uh, we're contractually <laughs> obligated to do so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's, let's give them do it. Some let's more. give it. They, there are people in this movie. <laughs> That deserve there flowers. Some. Yes, there are some. So let's give out some flowers, guys. All right? We got the patrons playing along. We are here you, to give you flowers. You listening along in your car or home or office or wherever you are, play along too. Let's shoot us an email. This show is trash at gmail.com. Let me know who you thought the best and worst were in <laughs> Double Dragon. But we're going to start with the most prestigious award, as we always do. It's the Will Patton Award for Intensity. You want a war? I'll give you... Oh, I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night. And if they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember forever the night they played the Titans. That's right, baby. Man, oh, man. If Will Patton had been the bad guy in this movie, oof. You imagine how much better Shogakuku would have been if it had been Will Patton. That's true. Yeah. He would have sold all the stupid oh, dialogue. Yeah. No res- disrespect. I like Robert Patrick as an actor, mm-hmm. yeah. but this wasn't it. The Will Patton Award goes to who had the most intense performance, who really was just like, oh, I'm bringing it and I'm dialed in, dialed in for Double Dragon. Who you got, Mueller? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, let me. I'm gonna go off the board here. Let Let's me go with it. Andy Dick as the small. No, <laughs> James loves Andy. I Dick. hate that guy. <laughs> I do too. But man, He's he was the worst. He was given a hell of a small. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you just gave a Will Pat nomination <laughs> to Andy Dick. <laughs> oh, man. hell froze over. Oh no. <sighs> 
can, we can only go oh up from here. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Smith went with Leon Russom, who played Chief DeMario. He goes, it was tough for me. A lot of actors really went for it in this movie, but most of them belong in the trash can. Uh, so I thought which role was closest to the performance that Will Patton would give us. With that in mind, I got to choose the Chief. He wasn't intense by the book definition but he was definitely passionate about fighting crime and doing the right thing i loved how at the end he challenged his men to join him and take back the city and then had the balls to go alone and back up his words the respect they showed when he came out of the building at the end was enough to justify my choice yeah i should say that when they were all scared to walk in or walk out of the building he yeah did he did show that he wasn't asking them to do anything he wasn't willing to do himself got in the home v and went marched off into the distance and turns out he didn't have to fight anything so you know not that big of a deal but i respect that choice jason for sure um i'm going with al craps about to go down leong as my will Patton award winner there you go i i just that dude is is he ever not super intense in anything he's doing like that's why like uh, uh go lab gave him that nickname you know she you know crap's about to go down mm. when Al Leong shows up. That's true. And I thought he was great. So that, that's who I'm giving. It's a it, We're scraping the barrel. There were not a lot of intense performances in this movie. No. But uh, Josh Bowman said, look, I'm going to go with Nils Allen Stewart and Henry Kinji for playing Bo a Bobo together. It was two different actors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though lots of line delivery was subpar, his actions and facial expressions made me believe that he thought he was the baddest mamma jamma on the planet. I loved seeing him transformed into a monster in every scene he was in. I absolutely loved it. Uh, I was one. It was one of the only performances that shined through an otherwise underwhelming cast. So we're kind of spraying all over the place here, Bob. That's but true. Who do you think really brought the intensity? Mm, wow, that's it's a tough one. Mm-hmm. <sighs> the mailman. The, the airmail guy. <laughs> the airmail guy, dude. <laughs> airmail. All the way. <laughs> airmail. <laughs> You don't jump wow. off that damn building <laughs> and do a belly flop in the dirt. You know what? I respect it. Yeah. I respect uh, that pick. That's true. I was going to go with the Cascos, but I... Yeah. I See, I was there, too. I'm like, I was there. No. His martial arts was there. Oh, yeah. His martial arts was fire. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying anything negative yeah. about his martial arts, but his... Yeah. yeah. Little, little lackluster on that other department. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh Juan Ramirez also went Al Leong. He said, this guy always has a small role, but damn, does he give everything he has for it. I need to watch the documentary about his life someday soon. Is there a documentary about Al's life? I did not know that. There is. I am definitely watching that. Well, that means with two votes, Al Leong is going to win the Will Patton Award. Hopefully deserved. Love that guy. Finally. Awesome. All right, on to... Well, I was going to say greener pastures, but I guess crappier pastures because we're about to talk about the award we give out to the worst actor in the movie, the actor who portrayed that they had a skill the level of a trash can full of dirt. I think we're thinking it all in one person. Trash can, oh, trash can, it's a trash can full of dirt, yeah. Love never dies, and neither do they. Love, Love is eternal, and that's a long time. That's right. <laughs> Steven Seagal is the shameful face of our trash can. And who, Ryan, in your opinion, was the trash can full of dirt in this movie? So I'll say this. Generally, you as you do something more and more, you get better at it, right? Yeah. Mm. So why the hell was Alyssa Milano worse <laughs> as an older actor than a child actor? I don't know. She's my trash can. Trash can. Slam the lid on her Slam head. Slam the lid on it. And With their ass hanging out? <laughs> yeah, let's have her ass hanging out. That's fine. I'm stuck in the trash can. Run her up uh, to her brother. Jeez. <laughs> Pulling the whole family. Throw all the Milanos in there. All of them. Oh trash can. Throw them in like a, like a bag of half-eaten Milano cookies. Throw them in cookies. that toxic river that your clothes, you jump in, your clothes, you come out with Perfect. clean clothes, and they're all dry. Well, if she jumps in, she come out naked. Well, <laughs> Jason Smith said Christina Wagner as Lash is his trash can nominee. Uh, 
what did she do? <laughs> <laughs> she didn't do anything. Honestly, tell me what she did aside from the very beginning throwing the whip around and getting the first medallion. Her part was totally forgettable and I expected so much more from how she appeared in the beginning. They did set her up to be like this big bad They did. They did. And then they she did. did very little then after that. Gone. She yeah. had a beautiful smile though. I don't know if the script held her back or it was her acting, but she didn't elevate the role in any way. So that's a vote. One for Alyssa Milano and one for Christina Wagner as it comes to me. And I am going to give a second vote to Alyssa Milano, she sucked hardcore in this movie, and she was just from the first line. The power core is doing what we can. We can really use you guys. What do you say? And I'm just like, nope, that's not it. That's not how you're supposed to. Do no, that. that's not how that goes at all. No, she was terrible in this movie, and there was a lot of. Te- I mean, Scott Wolf was terrible. He was terrible. Uh, Robert Patrick was terrible. Yep. Lash was terrible. She sucked the worst out of all of them. Mm. I, I, she should have been fired from movies after this. They, next time she walked into her agent's office, they should have been, I'm sorry, it, you're not allowed no. to make movies anymore. She should have fired her, her agency. Drag. Yeah, fire them. Do something. It was just awful, dude. Uh, Josh Roman said, I was going back and forth a long time about either giving it to Alyssa Milano or Julia Nixon. Upon viewing it again, it became glaringly obvious that the trash can full of Dirt Award goes to Robert Patrick as Koga Shuko. Maybe it's because I expect a lot more from him considering he was a freaking T-1000 and I was banking on him delivering a performance comparable to a Raul Julia's M. Bison. Thank yeah, you. That's a fair. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Yeah. But nothing he did on screen made me even remotely believe he was bought into this character. I get this wasn't a high caliber part, but he at least could have put a little bit of effort into it and made a memorable character for us to love. I love this take from Josh because like we've been talking about, Street Fighter, same year, base of a video game, yep. both extremely stupid, but you have the difference between an actor that took the part seriously mm-hmm. and said, okay, I'm in this dumb video game movie, but I'm going to blow this thing out of right. the water and have a freaking blast doing it. Absolutely. And then you've got Robert collecting a paycheck over here in Double Dragon. Well, he's still living off his Terminator mm-hmm. earnings, probably. Sorry. Just oh, love yeah. that point. No, that that's a good point. point. Yeah. Bob, trash can somebody. I'm trash canning the fuck out of Scott Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> I am cramming his Marty McFly abomination body in the trash can, That's right. taking a whiz on it, rolling it down the hill, entering a bar, dumping some rum, dumping some vodka, rolling him out the bar, and kicking him down That's the right. street even further till we get to someone else's house, have them take a steaming pile of cow dung on him, and then roll him out down to someone else's house. House. That's right. Oh, dude. We keep going down the that, fucking yeah. street. Go down to the baseball baseball team and say, hey, kids, go beat the crap out of this guy. <laughs> oh, He sucked more than Pam Anderson. How do you really feel? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> I love it. My that God. Was, that was legendary. He was terrible. Yeah, he was. How the hell did he get a job at Party at Five? He was bad. He was doing it. Well, he, How the hell did any of those guys get a job at Party at Five? That's I don't a good know. question. I don't know. It took Mark DeCasco's 20 years to get another big part after Jeez. being a double dragon, dude. Yeah. Took him all the way till John Wick 3. John Wick 3 is his big like that's his best that's his best role. Yeah. Oh. That's his best best role. <sighs> I yep. love it. Because he embraced who he was <laughs> and just went for it. And that's like as a, you get to a point as an actor like Robert Patrick, Keanu Reeves, yeah. Mark DeCascos, or Van Damme or Schwarzenegger, yeah. you get to a certain point where you're like, I'm literally ruining myself because I'm doing yeah. what other people are telling me to do. I'm not good at this. I need to do what I'm good at. Right. And like Stallone said, he goes, I don't go out and do these parts that you see like yeah. Andrew Garfield or the, the, Leonardo DiCaprio or all yeah. these fancy smancy guys. They go out and they do what the fans yeah. want them to do. Yeah. And that is... Do you? We pay to see you. Absolutely. Right. And Robert Patrick's crushing it now. He's crushing it now. He was the bad guy in the second season of Reacher. I know. I love it. I haven't finished it yet. It's great. And I love the I love the Terminator references in the first five minutes of the episode. Awesome. It's great. I it find your niche and that that's that's just just stick to it. Just stick to it. I I feel bad for. I don't know if this happened to Scott Wolf, but it's like I don't think he's a bad person. No. I don't think he like he just I've seen him in other things and he's fine. Yeah. But this was. Terrible. Yeah. Terrible. He wanted he he made me want to headbutt a television set. <laughs> and then he, he wanted me to get he wanted me to like 
<laughs> I <laughs> try to figure out how to say it because it's gonna sound. You know, this is the perfect way to sum it up. You know, after you have awesome, beautiful sex with your significant other, and you get up to use the bathroom, and you still got a rager, <laughs> just take the door and slam it onto it. <laughs> <laughs> That's that is Scott Wolf's performance in Double Dragon. Yeah, it's like <laughs> slamming the door on your dick. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, you heard it here. I don't Take know, Austin. Whatever you got from it. what I just said, a mumbo jumbo. <laughs> and no, I think that was clear as crystal. Bob. <laughs> yeah. All right. That wasn't mumbo jumbo at all. Take I don't it know to how the you're bank. Any more clear than that. That's very clear. <laughs> uh, Juan says, <laughs> Juan says the Lee brothers' mom, Satori, she was there for an expo dump, got fridged, and brought back for a Mufasa style. <laughs> Good job, Simba. <laughs> Good job, homely and ugly. Oh, wow. <laughs> Blondie McHench woman is a very close second, however. But that means that with two votes, Alyssa Milano is going to win the trash can full of dirt. Although I almost want to give it to Scott Wolf just <laughs> off of Bob's freaking takedown. But there was no shortage. <laughs> Dang. No, yeah. That was awesome. Oh, God. That, that guy's, I want to I wanna pick, take that part out of a BMR episode and dip it in bronze and hang that on the wall. That's what I want. That's what I want to do. That was incredible. We're moving on to the uh, the next award we give out, which is the Unsung Hero Award. We named after Steve James. You know, every place you go, there's always someone who thinks he's a badass, right? Then there are those few who are. Are you still kind of a badass karate boy? That's right. If ever a movie needed a Steve James, it was Double Dragon yes. 94. Yeah. That side character that just made the movie better because they were in it. Mm. So we try to talk about a lesser known person, someone who didn't have a big part, but they played their part so well that it actually made the movie better. Who was your unsung hero of the movie, Ryan? I'm going with Huey and Lewis. Hugh, Al Long, Al Leong, and yep. Jeff Amato. Yep. yep. Great picks. Uh, great picks. Jason also went Al Leong as Lewis. He goes, this man was awesome as Genghis Khan and Bill and Ted. Yes, I forgot. He was oh, there. yes. They fed him the, uh, was he, was it the ice cream? Well, yes. Yeah. We, no, that was Napoleon, but he oh. was in the sporting goods store with the baseball bat <laughs> just fucking <laughs> whipping him around. Yes. Football pads on. Oh, it was God. awesome, dude. Uh, st- <laughs> Uh, funny stealing a candy bar before the police raid in Die Hard. Mm-hmm. Remember he took the crunch bar out from underneath the thing? Yes. And a total badass as a Wing Kong bad guy in Big Trouble in Little China. He's a dude that comes out of the fog when Kurt Russell is going, these guys, these sing dings, they, they got, got enemies. Yeah. Wing Kong, we're red, 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 red turbans or something. Oh, these right. guys are animals, Jack. Yeah. Yes. That was Al Leong, man, oh, with his uh, meat cleavers whipping oh. them around. Such a, <laughs> just a gem of a... Yes. Like, that guy has hundreds of movies. Yeah. Under yes, I, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Mueller on this one. So you're going with yeah, I'm you're going, going with them too. Also, because at the end of the movie, we we didn't say anything. They had yeah, signs they saying had we'll signs. hench for food. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. I'm like hey, those they, guys. Yeah, they they were committed. They did it. They did what they were asked to do, and they had fun yeah. with it. Jason finishes. He goes from the beginning. I was exciting to watch them kick butt. They cut their tongues out, and then his role got super reduced. They really failed to capitalize on the skills he brought to the movie. So Jason, uh, great vote for Al. You guys have voted for Al and Jeff. So that's three to two there already. Uh, I actually, because I made Al my Will Pat, I didn't put him as, I mean, I think that's a good pick. Uh, I went with Hawk. I thought Hawk, the tweaker dude, was actually pretty funny. Mm-hmm. He gets yeah. poked in the eye through the boathouse. Yeah. He walks up and he's like, you got a problem with that? And he's like all tweaking out. <laughs> yeah. Like he went for it. I thought he was kind of funny. He was better than a Bobo was. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. like make Hawk the head of the Mohawks. Right. That would have been actually he actually had a Mohawk. entertaining. I thought that guy yeah. did a pretty good job for being a tweaker junkie gang member in a post-apocalyptic world where everyone else is like not taking it seriously mm-hmm. at all. Yep. I thought he was good. Uh, Josh Bowman said, I hope I'm not the only one here, but Leon, Leon Rossum as Chief Delario was the one performance in the entire show that could be considered good. Loved the scenes with him and the other police that were his betrayal of a fed up civil servant was excellent i would have loved a whole movie about him and his family dealing with the weirdness of new angeles um you weren't the only i think you might be the only one for unsung hero but he he got a vote for will Patton. so yeah you're not the only yeah. one that appreciated him for sure dude uh not at all uh let's go to our last vote juan said milano's dad chief of police at first he seemed like a trash can nominee but redeemed himself when he called out his cops and basically said f it i'll do it myself but with three votes 
Al Leong is going to win. He's going to double dip the Will Patton winner and the Unsung Hero Award. Yeah. That is awesome. Congratulations. This dude, even in a crap movie, rises to the top. Love it. Macho Man would be so proud of him. So it's time to board the positivity train, guys. Mm -hmm. What did the film do well? We all, I think, maybe have showed our hand of what we think of the movie overall. (laughs) But we got to dig deep here, and let's come up with three things that you thought the film actually did really well that you enjoyed. You got some for me, Ryan? Yeah, yeah, I got some. Uh, mailman belly flop. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did kind of chuckle at that. You know, even though it was incredibly stupid, I was like, "Ha!" Ah. Yeah. Um, I think Mark Dacascos. He was clearly one of two or three people who were competent in martial arts in this movie. Yes. So whenever he was doing yeah. martial arts, I enjoyed that. And then I'll just go uh, Huey, uh, Huey and Lewis. So I had them a, both. I had very similar. So it was pretty much mine was the uh, special effects. Yeah. And like the like pretty much like the production design. I yep. was like for, for the movie like this, I'm like I was very impressed with it. And then Mark Dacascos for the legit martial art legit legitimacy. And then those two gentlemen. Yeah. It was like yeah. yeah. No, I think I'm, we're not going to say much different because there's not really that great of stuff <laughs> no. from yeah. the movie. But I like the themed gangs. They were stupid but hilarious. Mailman. Yes. Yeah. Disco Afro guys, uh, kids dress or adults dress up like kids. Like that stuff cracked me up. Uh, Mark Tacascos, again, I'll just join you guys in saying he was awesome. Mm-hmm. And then Al Young and Jeff, Lam- uh, Jeff Amato. Those guys, those are my favorite things from this movie. Yep. Those guys did well. Mark did well. I can't wait till we cover uh, Mark Tacascos' uh, action movie that we saw, yes. Drive, Br- yes. with Brittany Murphy. That yes. movie's oh. insane. Yes. yes. You got to see that one too. Uh, Jason Smith said, the car with a garbage combustion tank. I can, I can imagine creating that went like this. Uh, remember the car fusion thing from Back to the Future 2? Just do something like that, but with flames. That's probably exactly how they That's thought exactly that. what they did. <laughs> uh, the different gangs with different themes. It kind of reminded me of the Warriors. Yeah, absolutely, dude. And all the sweet 90s clothes. Double Dragon brought to you by No Fear Clothing. <laughs> <laughs> I had a couple of No Fear Clothing. Oh, yes, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I remember that. Remember those? Or the pipes. Yeah. <laughs> the pipes. Yep. yep. Yeah, dude. Or the Big Johnson shirts. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Yep. Good stuff. Uh, Josh Bowman said, I actually really like the production design of the movie. Look at that, Bob. Yes. Thank you. Josh is with you. Uh, I thought New L.A. was a great and goofy playground, and they did a good job portraying it. Uh, Mark Tacascos' martial arts, what little there was, I enjoyed watching him as I think he puts his all into the fight Mm -hmm. scenes. Josh, he absolutely does. Uh, Both the car and boat chase sequences. Yeah, the boat chase I know we kind of glossed over it. That wasn't bad. It was fine. The flaming river and stuff like that. It was entertaining. It was entertained. Yeah. They were the only parts I really thought were well done, and the humor mixed in worked worked for me as a viewer. Uh, And then finally, Juan said, the scenes with Alyssa Milano in them, jorts and garter bell with stockings. It was such an unusual combination, but damn it if it's not hot. Yeah. (laughs) That's the thing. I love it. She has a she has a beautiful booty. Um, it's it's so good that even when the Lee brothers admiring the view when they were sneaking in, yeah, they did admire the view when they snuck in. Yeah. Robert Patrick's drip is his number two thing. From the top of his frosted tips to the soles of his shoes, he was peak '90s style back in the day, and I still want that coat. <laughs> Bro wants to look like a Supreme Court justice out there. I love it, dude. <laughs> With the shoulder, the dude was wearing shoulder pads. Yeah. You're a man, mm-hmm. right? Why are you I've, looking like a businesswoman from the 80s? I've seen linebackers with smaller shoulder pads. <laughs> Seriously. And number three, the cameo by Michael Berryman as the maniac leader. The guy is the definition of a badass character actor, and I loved him getting basically force choked. Yes. Guys, you guys all brought it today on these awards. Awesome job. These are all fantastic good. takes. But it is time for us to land this plane, so we have to come up with a final rating. <laughs> I'm just... Uh, I mean, I'm really con- curious to see where you guys are going to come down on this. <laughs> but is this a good movie? Objectively, you enjoyed it, and it's good. Is it a bad movie, full stop? Or is it maybe, yeah, okay, we'll acknowledge it's bad, but this movie freaking rules, and it's the bad movie that rules. Ryan, where do you come down on this one? All right, so you, Bob Holzer needs some help moving a couch. <laughs> you're, you're his partner Never. for the day. <laughs> You know, he had the the couch got kind of stuck in that apartment one time while he found happened to find another one. You have to remove a couch from here. You deliver one, you remove one sort of thing. So this couch gets stuck in the doorway, right? And Bob says, all right, you know, you just stand there and catch it. I'm going to like do a 
linebacker ram on this thing, get it through the door. Is this your Bob story? hits it. <laughs> right? All of a sudden, this couch crashes down on you, and there's what dog shit on the other <laughs> side of the cushions. This is a bad movie, man. This is oh. it's terrible. I It's a 3.9. It's like a 1.9. I don't know who the hell's bringing it up to a 3.9, oh, but no. way overrated. Bad movie. <sighs> I thought you were going to love this one, Ryan. I, I, I tried, <laughs> I James. Here, I, I tried. This is Ryan Mueller's I tried to movie. love it. Alyssa Milano in the, you know, the seatbelt, <laughs> garter belt, <laughs> yeah. pants, you know. No, I get it. I get it. Ass in the vent. What are you going to do? Yeah, no. Jason Smith also says, bad movie, full stop. Just too many terrible one-liners, groan-worthy puns, and random screaming for no reason for this movie to be anything but bad. Dialogue is horrible. Fighting was questionable. And aside from getting to look at Alyssa Milano, the crush of every 80s kid, including me, that's true. every other minute was a slog to get through. I watched it for free on Tubi, and I still want my money back. <laughs> That's a we didn't even thing. cover all the screaming that like oh, Billy and Jimmy were doing and everything terrible. else. It was awful. Bad, bad, bad. Yeah. All right, Bob, how would you sum up your feelings on Double Dragon? Bad movie. That rules. What? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I was entertained. And the parts that I was entertained at was the, I for, I have already covered the yeah. set pieces, special effects, okay. the cascos. With that aside, I during the the action sequences, I was entertained. Okay, I was entertained. Uh, every all everything was just hilarious to me. Like the, the <laughs> most over dramatic cell jobs I've ever seen. Yes, the constant screaming. Uh, I en- I I did enjoy it. Yes, it's like yes, yeah. it's cringeworthy. Yes, it's it's bad, but. But you know there's what? a few there was a few moments of that saved it for me and I was right. like I respect these. And I love that you love it. Can I tell you that? I love that you love this movie. <laughs> That's awesome to me. That is awesome, hey. dude. That is awesome. Good take there. Uh Josh says as much as I was hoping this would give me the same amount of joy as Street Fighter does, I was sorely disappointed overall with Double Dragon. The glimmers of hope I felt through the small performances and wacky vehicle chases weren't enough to put me over the line. This is a bad movie. And Juan says it's stupid, brainless fun, and combined with the above-mentioned wardrobe and the fact that this is nearly a clone of one of my all-time favorite movies, Surf Ninjas, with Rob Schneider being swapped out for Alyssa Milano, a massive upgrade in my opinion, makes this a bad movie that rules for me. So look at that. Juan Ramirez is jumping on board with you, Bob. Thank you, Ron. So we've gotten three bad movies, two bad movies that rules, and it falls to me to have the final word. Oh, my God. It's like the World Series right here. (laughs) (laughs) Three to two. Double Dragon, uh, before we get to how I feel feel about it, is 100% a bad movie. Right. Uh, It screws up so many things. Uh, and, and so many things that are easy to not screw up. It can't even do the simple paint by numbers stuff correctly. Um, yep. I think this is a bad movie that sucks. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. This movie put my ass in the hospital. <laughs> it, I, I literally was watching it right before I got a kidney stone. It jarred something loose in my body. And it, my body is, was trying to expel whatever bad juju came through <laughs> with Double Dragon. And I ended up coming in here to talk about this and ending up in the ER. And I 100% blame this movie for that happening. to put a disclaimer it's, on the DVD. Yeah. Might, might cause kidney stones. Might cause kidney stones. <laughs> <laughs> or door slamming on dick syndrome. Here's, here's the thing. I will never forget Double Dragon, okay? No. This is the only episode in three years and hopefully for a long time that we've ever had to stop in the middle of for someone to go to the hospital. Yeah. And that someone was me. Yeah. And it's Double Dragon's fault. Bad I'd, movie. I'd blame it. Put it directly in the trash can. Do all those things to the movie that Bob wanted to do to Scott Wolf. Okay. <laughs> Double Dragon. Take a fucking hike. Okay. <laughs> You farging bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. 
<laughs> I so tried. it was four to two is the final tally. Yeah. There. Yep. We don't know what Rachel and Mel would have said had they been able oh, to, Rachel hated to it. stick around. <laughs> she hated, I'm sure she hated I mean, it. She told me in the hospital that she thought she was dumber after watching it. <laughs> so I told you when, after that movie was over, Masters of the Universe started counting down to the play. Yes. And she's like, we're not watching no, FM no. Masters of the Universe. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I told her, you know, well, I know it's all in the beginning of the episode, but I'm like, you got to pick the weeks you come up here better. Yep. Like, you know you're going to get roped into whatever it is we're talking about. I got to make sure we're, we're Check off. the schedule. <laughs> Check the schedule next Check time. Check the schedule. Say, hey, James, I'm planning on coming into town. <laughs> what movie are you guys doing? <laughs> no oh, don't come this week. It's Double Dragon. Come this week. It's Runaway we're doing, right? Yes. right. Something. Good Lord. All right, next week. I'm, I'm excited for next week because we get to flush Double Dragon. Yes, we and do. And instead, we get to talk about yet another what is this? Our third now? Fourth. Fourth. Our fourth, fourth. Chuck Norris yes. flick. Yes. Coming back. We did Delta Force One. We did Breaker Breaker and him saving his brother from a bunch of hillbillies in Cowboy Town. And then we came back for Delta Force Two, where he climbed a mountain to take down Billy Drago yes. in the Colombian jungle. Cocaine flying everywhere. Absolutely. Mad, mad men, helicopter, machine guns. <laughs> right. <laughs> and now we're coming back. It's going to be Bob, Joe, and Kurt Mummer will be here for Silent Rage. I got a feeling nice. I'll be on my own on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I love Silent Rage. I I think I saw it a long time ago. Like, a, like maybe in the 80s is when I saw it. I don't know. If Kurt's going to be twitching he's gonna get so bored with that movie is it boring it's not like boring but it's like slow it's it's, it's slow and the the fight like is just very so, there's no there's not a lot of music to it they didn't yeah, start really adding yeah. music to his fights until like well, it's, it's like a like chuck a, norris movie it's, it's a chuck a, norris a movie slow burn. sound effects it's like yeah. literally you yeah. the soundtrack is his kicks <laughs> Good. kicking you back in time Good. I, <laughs> I hope kurt comes in pissed off i do too <laughs> ready i do too <laughs> let's go <laughs> Dang it, I can't. I mean, let's go. Unleash both barrels. Absolutely. And uh, it's because it's more like a horror flick, isn't it, kind of? Yeah, it's like a combination of like the like a Michael Myers like a monster. type yeah. of guy, yeah. monster type. It's like some unstoppable killing machine. Right. Someone. The tagline is, science created him. Now Chuck Norris must destroy him. That's right. That's it. So Silent Rage, check us out next week. We'll be back with that. In the meantime, just thank you all for being here. Ramirez, um, thank you for being my right. only friend today. And thanks to <laughs> Josh, also to Josh Bowman and Jason Smith, and on behalf of the Mayor Ryan Mueller and the man old Bob Hauser and Mel Vandy and Rachel, who couldn't be here to finish this episode, and for my healing kidneys, <laughs> thank you. I'm James Hauser, and thank you guys for listening. Oh, yeah. It was the longest episode in history. <laughs> it took two days to finish. <laughs> you got a kidney stone. This movie almost killed me and Dion. <laughs> I mean, I felt like I was going to die. I don't think you could die from a kidney stone. I don't think you can. I don't think you can, but at least you got morphine. <laughs> Oh, I got it all. Yeah, you got it all. Enough for just, a grown man. Just give it all to James. <laughs> enough for a grown man. All the morphine. They gave enough morphine to James to satisfy an elephant. They, they had to pull up the truck that the hot Mohawks were driving full of morphine just right up the back door of the hospital. I was like, you know what? Leave the can and get out of here. <laughs>